The squig was bewitched, entranced, fascinated. By the side of the river he trotted as one trots, when very small, by the side of a Gretchen who holds one spellbound by exciting stories, and when tired at last he sat on the bank, whilst the river still chattered on to him, a babbling procession of the best stories in the world, sent from the heart of the war, to be told at last to the insatiable sea. <laughs> from Squig in the Willows. <laughs> Roll the music, if you please. First here, then there, right up your mind already! Death is close. I love the death. Frequently. Oh, I love Wind in the Willows, by the way. <laughs> I, um, I did a podcast about it not too long ago. About, did yeah, you? Yeah, the book. The book is fantastic. Uh, everybody, mm-hmm. if you haven't read The Wind in the Willows, go and read it. It's beautiful. You know what's better that than the book? Absolutely. What's better than the book? The live action version where they sing and dance. I mm, Is it? And they have terrible, <laughs> terrible costumes. Mm. <laughs> what, what, what year did that come out in? Because I remember seeing that in the cinema and being like, this is terrible, but I oh, love the, the jazzy music. 90s. The live action version, I don't yeah. know. Late 90s, I would say. 97, 98, something like the that. The strangest thing about the visual aesthetic of that film was it looked like it was a stage play. Like, the, the costumes right. were all very basic and something that a, the stage, a theatre company could do easily. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. There are so many adaptations of The Wind in the Willows as well. There's a Rankin no, Bass one, there's a Disney one, there's the the the, in, the incredible Cosgrove and Hall stop motion one. Mm. Absolutely. Cosgrove Hall were always the masters at doing stop motion. Yeah, and it suits and The Wind in the Willows. It just suits it beautifully. That's just so wonderfully British. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. The, the best way to describe there it. Is, there is it's... something about The Wind in the Willows that is charmingly British. Um, mm-hmm. And it's 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 a charming book, just all the way through the relationships between the characters, particularly Ratty and Mole, are absolutely beautiful. He's no Rattigan, though. Just to be fair, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but who is Rattigan, Andy? Who is Rattigan? Uh, he is a. Uh, he's totally not Moriarty. Totally not Moriarty. Oh, totally, totally not, not Moriarty. played by Vincent Price. Totally not no. so gay coded. That no. he could basically be <laughs> Freddie Mercury, you know. It's, um, <laughs> you know, totally not that. Um, if you do go and read it, guys, make sure you get a particular copy of it because many, many present-day printings leave out the best chapter, which is the Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Why did they leave it mm-hmm. out? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I I was talking to someone recently and I said, like, oh man, I love the metaphysics in Wind in the Willows, you know, all this stuff about like paganism and whatnot. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? That's the chapter where it all happens. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Weird. It's really Church good. Church of England. Do, do they, have they taken it out just to get rid of like any political, religious oh, kind of issues possible. that might crop up? Possibly. That might be the reason. I, I don't know. I it's a pretty weak reason, but it's know. something I could see, perhaps. Yeah, but they often do. They often mm. take that chapter out. It's the, it's the chapter that has Pan in it. Oh. The God of the Woods. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful. It's yeah, really I, 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 stunning. I, I never knew Pan was in that film. Yeah, Pan oh, is... Not uh, the book, I should say. Pan is the character that coins the phrase Wind in the Willows. Huh, okay. It's it's now, um yeah, it's a really beautiful chapter of the book. Um I definitely get it. Definitely read it. It's it's so soft and beautiful and brilliant. The the relationships between those characters are, be- are gorgeous. Apps and Badger is my spirit weird. animal basically. <laughs> What's weird is I have two copies of Wind in the Willows. Mm-hmm. Uh, one was my granddad's, one was my dad's when he was a kid. Both of them have that chapter. The Piper, in, so I yeah. didn't know that chapter had been taken mm-hmm. out. There's a lot of copies these days that don't have the Piper at the Gates of Dawn for some odd, odd reason. That's truly bizarre. Yeah, it is strange, isn't mm. it? Now, you mentioning Wind no. in the Willows. Does anyone remember a, live, a really old live-action series that took place in a... In the forest, so gardens are clearly in the UK, and it filmed like animals and had voiceovers for them. 
I remember no. it was on the TCC back in the day, but I don't remember what it was called. God, I remember no. The, 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 the pacing was very slow, and it was just <laughs> like live-action <laughs> shots of just someone out in the world filming just like frogs and stuff with a really weird voiceover <laughs> over the top of them. Hang on. Was it like really comedy based? It it I it might have been. I am I getting just this twinge in the back of my head, and I'm seeing very sort of vague images of that. Something like close-ups like that. of hedgehogs talking and frogs yeah, talking. Yeah, I can't, but I can't get a bead on it. But the voice acting was pretty terrible. I remember that. I remember the I, voice acting being pretty pretty poop. Yeah, I am. Um, ah, I, I there is. Yeah, there was something like that, but I can't. Yeah. For the life of me, remember what it was. Okay, I'm, I'm glad someone else remembers, and it's not just me. TCC, no. any anyone remembers, put it into like uh, onto Facebook, so I can yeah, I can have Fluff a look and, and let me know. Do you yeah. guys know what that yes. is? There, there may be too many young people now. Yeah. I don't know. It's I don't know what our demographic <laughs> is. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> it's all the way through, Andy. It's all. The oh, way through. that's good. That's that's kind of cool. Yeah. Speaking of things that uh, people forget. I'm Adam, Hi. that's George, mm. and this is Andy. Hello! Hi! <laughs> because we are normally very, very bad at doing that bit. We it's are true. normally pretty bad, but then again, it's what people yeah. expect. It's the brand! Yeah. I, 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 this this is not a, uh, a high-depth um, look into anything other than three people. <laughs> Somebody asked me, actually, not long back, you know, what's the... Um, What's the, the mission statement of the Fluff and Hammer? <laughs> mission statement? And, 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 and I had a thought of, I had to think about it. And you know what came to uh-huh. me, right? It was, well, basically, it's like three guys having a sleep right, over right. when you're all into Warhammer. It's like, you, you know that scene in Extras where Ian, where Ian McKellen is explaining his acting process? Yeah. That's what the yeah. Fluff and Hammer is. Yeah. <laughs> We basically just set out to have a conversation and hope that you guys enjoy mm. it, and that's pretty much yeah. it. But what's your five-year plan, Gruff, for the Fluff and Hammer? Well, well, my five-year plan? Your ten-year plan. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hoping that at some point we'll get enough issues of Warhammer Monthly recorded so we can start putting yeah, them out. Oh, that'd that, be good, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that'll, that'll take five years. That's a apparently. good five-year plan, I think. That's, mm. that's a doable five-year plan. I like that. Um, and... I'd like to start introducing other game systems in, so maybe have an episode on Frostgrave, mm. maybe get George to talk about Ravenloft for an totally episode. Totally, I'd go for that. Uh, Andy has to talk about... Sausages. Of something that you, you've you never heard of, so <laughs> I can get you to do that. Sausage rolls. Uh, <laughs> Andy gets to talk about uh, Dark Souls. Yay! Oh, wow. oh that'd be yeah. great. I, I that'd think George be... would be jealous of that, to be fair. I, I, I'm well in on that one. Definitely. <laughs> well, well, where's on where's Elden, Elden Ring, for God's sake? Yeah, no, right? No, 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 no. No, I've got it. I've got it. Andy. Yes, hello. Your your mission is, I want you at some point to host an episode about Atmosphere. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I'm I've never played it. Too. I have. You've never played Atmosphere? No, I, I just remember the amazing adverts on TV. I have uh, I love Atmosphere. Love it. Kerfu the mummy. I what was love it? It was, it was atmosphere. atmosphere and what was the, the, the other one? Because there was there like was, three in total, wasn't there? Was there was the original Atmosphere, which was called Nightmare in a lot of other territories. The reason it, it was, wasn't yeah, here yeah. is because of the show Nightmare. They didn't want to confuse it. Ah. There were three add-ons. There was um, the, the, ba- yeah, the Baron Samdi add-on, the um, Anders Shachran add-on and the elizabeth bathory add-on then there was Mm -hmm. atmosphere the harbingers which was like a new game which is really good Mm -hmm. like a refinement of the original really good there are a couple of add-on tapes for that which were crap and then Mm -hmm. it went away for years and years and years and then more recently there was a dvd one which was terrible and there mm-hmm. was also a one that was hosted by khufu the mummy um who was really camp (laughs) <laughs> like phenomenally camp and not frightening at all. And there's a new version out that you can use your phones with. Yeah, yeah. Really? The one mm. I love the most so. is the um, the second add-on for the original game, which was Anders Shachran, the witch, who was the... Uh, yeah. She starts off really beautiful, like this French peasant girl. And as time goes on, as the hour wears on, she starts to like become more ragged and she starts to twitch and she starts to grunt like a pig. I and relate to that. As time goes on, she she melds into like the the classic sort of crone. It's really good. It's mm. really yeah, quite frightening yeah. and very hard to play. 
God damn it, I loved Atmosphere. Mostly just for the uh, the gatekeeper. Yeah. You have fallen into a black hole. <laughs> Miss a turn. I like, there's a bit in it where he, he, he tricks one of the players into coming closer to the television. Yeah. And he keeps going, closer. <laughs> and when you're right up against it, he just shrieks at them. <laughs> and they, Never come near me again, you maggot. I love it. If you jumped. Miss it. Yeah, yeah, he was a bastard. He was a total <laughs> bastard. So good. But the the thing that it's I don't know what it is about curfew the mummy, but that it just sticks in my brain. Have you it's seen any peak. of the fan made videos on um on YouTube? Oh yeah. Some of them are great. Yeah, yeah. Mm, right, some of them are absolutely There's a French amazing. guy called Captain GMC, and his <laughs> are at least as good as the ones that were produced for the game. Ah, oh, that's cool. Oh yeah. They are at, one of uh, one thing I've always wanted to do is um, do a Hero Quest version, so something you can have playing on YouTube as playing Hero Quest. Right, and right. And then you just have like the Witch Lord turn up and go, Miss That was a great that'd idea. Be, that'd be really fun. Yeah, yeah, that that would be fun. Has there ever been a, a Kickstarter for that... like these games? Because it seems like that that's kind of like <clears throat> a classic one that you know I'm surprised no one's tried to bring back. I'm kind of surprised that there hasn't been. Well, as I say, one came out maybe two years mm. ago that uh, uses mobile phones. So well, now is the prime time to do it. I mean, yeah. you could do it on social media, or on on YouTube, or whatever, and it would be perfect, you know. Well, yeah, as I say, you what you do is you film a load of stuff, put it onto uh, YouTube. You have the first video that you play, have the rest on random, mm. and you've just got yourself a wonderful experience of you don't know what's right, next. right. Mm. Yeah, that could be so much fun. Um, sadly, the more the more recent ones, like the DVD one, that did have the random element, so it accessed different tra- yep. tracks at random. But the the yep. the atmosphere was gone. Ironically, it's not scary <laughs> yeah, anymore. Yeah. It's silly, you know. Yeah, they they they, they went too far into the camp and not as far right. into the actual uh, unsettling behavior. The mm. best the atmosphere game. game is the Harbingers. Agreed. That is so much fun to play. It's fluid. It does away with a lot of the the really problematic elements of the original. Uh, mm-hmm. It has just enough of the horror in there, and it, it's yeah. also just fun and fluid to play. Mm-hmm. You know, each of the Harbingers yeah. as well are derived from historically existing either myths or people. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Elizabeth Bathory, or, um, of course. Yeah, Elizabeth yeah. Bathory, of course. You know, largely accounted as history's like first recorded serial killer. Yeah, because um, mm-hmm. she got adapted into Carmella, didn't she? The first That's vampire. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely correct. You've got Andy How did I know this? I learned from an anime. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from the Fate series. Brilliant. Uh, you've got Andy Shachran, who was burned as a witch. Um, mm-hmm. You've got uh, Le Gévaudan, the werewolf Le Gévaudan, who is named after the forest Le Gévaudan in France, which is where the werewolf myth was originally spawned. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. And if you ever really want to feel unsettled, read that thing. Mm. Like read the um, the original. Uh, I don't want to say tale because no, what happened? Like the accounts of what happened. Us a tale. Yeah, it's really unsettling. It's almost certainly not a wolf. It was almost certainly a serial killer or serial killers. Yeah. It was almost certainly people that were doing it. Mm. But it, mm-hmm. odds on, if you pass through that forest at a particular point in history, you were going to get not just killed but like slaughtered. Wow, dismembered. Yeah. yeah. Ap- dismembered with pieces that never get right. Found again. Absolutely. Oh, well, I, slaughtered. One would assume those bits were eaten, right? Yeah. Possibly, who knows? You never know. Who knows? You never know. Still exists. Leg of Odon, the the forest still exists. Mm-hmm. I'd love to I'm, go I'm, there. I was going to say, I'm I'm assuming <laughs> it's a little bit more pleasant than it used to be. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. It's like little French villages all dotted around it. You know, mm. it's gorgeous. It's still dangerous. You know, it's still a very big deep forest. You could get lost uh, in there. Okay, very I, I was going to ask if it was like animals kind of thing. Like, what kind of creatures do they have in that forest? Oh, you almost you know? certainly have wolves there. Ah, okay, yeah. You almost certainly, are. but wolves are generally quite retiring. They don't, they don't <laughs> approach human beings. So, no, uh, the retired they're werewolf. Starving. Oh, sorry, wolf. <laughs> <laughs> just in the old dog's home. <laughs> but to see dog's yeah. home. <laughs> Got a uh, Baron Samdi, obviously the voodoo lure. Yeah, um, yeah. The other, the only one that isn't an actual myth, insofar as I'm aware, is Helen, the poltergeist. Mm-hmm. Helen. Uh, Helen, yeah. Oh, Helen. I thought yeah. you said Helen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, I'm Helen, the poltergeist. I died in the Raglan. Insofar as I'm aware, anyway. Mm. 
Oh, I was washing up and then I just killed him. <laughs> but no, it's a fun game. Oh. It's a fun game. The original's fun too. It's a bit more clunky than the ones that yeah, came later. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff like fake cards and time cards that are very difficult to keep track of. Quite yeah, imaginative yeah. for the time, I suppose, as well. Yeah, compared to very like, involved. Uh, yeah, like when, when I think board games in my childhood, unfortunately, I just think, oh, Monopoly and yeah. uh, uh, not Kaplunk. What was it? What was the terrible one with the marble game? Where you, Screwball Scramble. Screwball Scramble, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God the nightmare it. that was Screwball Scramble, which yeah. you just cheated at because you couldn't be bothered with. Oh, I, I must The mainstay that. of every uh, bring a board game to school day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. There was always somebody with Screwball Scramble. Always, always. <laughs> no one liked them. I don't think anyone ever actually brought it in. I think it just appeared. It just overnight. appeared there. Yeah. Are, are you <laughs> saying it was like Cthulhu created? <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that there is a supernatural element to Screwball Scramble. Right, yes. Those who complete the great puzzle summon the great spirit of. I was going to say, is there like a Ouija board quality to it? Is it? Does it like summon something if you complete it? Is there no bites appear? No, no, no. no. <laughs> If you complete it, another one will grow. He completed <laughs> the puzzle a... box. I, I mean, screwball scramble. <laughs> now show him pain. It just throws uh, spores into the air, and where the spores fall upon the ground, another, another screwball, screwball scramble, scramble grows. sprouts. Yeah. What if it lands on yeah. a person? Do they become a screwball scrambler? <laughs> Which is like a zombie screwball <laughs> scramble machine. Well, that's where you get the marbles from. Oh. The marbles are people. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. are they are they souls or are they people who've just been transformed <laughs> into them? No, they're still living people. Okay. You know, they, uh, they scream as they roll around, but they're so small you can't hear now it. Now it sounds very much like Wishmaster, which is something else I watched this week. God almighty, I haven't seen that for years. Oh, it's still great. It, it popped on to Amazon Prime, and I was like, we talked about this like two or three weeks ago. I want to rewatch watch yeah. it, and it's still really fun. Yeah, I it remember is. it being fun. That which is eternal oh. cannot die. Massively but if it helps, gross. it hurt like hell. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt like hell. He's so good. She became most upset. In fact, she became quite hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> quite hysterical. Brilliant. Do you wish you didn't right. see this? Yeah. I the, do, do, you, do you remember uh, he like a student walks in on him like pulling the face off a dude? Yeah, and he, yeah. he, he mm-hmm. squeezes her eyes shut. Gruff might know who this uh, this person is. Do you reckon? Do you remember the actor Gruff? I don't. Do you remember Kirby from Frasier? Holy it's shit! It's Kirby from Frasier, the weird like uh, stoner kid. Oh god, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, with the big hair. It, yeah, it's the same g- kid with the same big hair. Oh my Bloody god! Wow. I was like, it's Kirby from Frasier. Wow, he's definitely going to have to talk to Frasier after this. Yeah, bloody hell! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favourite one is still. Uh, he'd have to go right through me, and I wish I could see that. Yes, ah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a bit that's like he's been. Yeah, you know, I wish. The, uh, I want you to leave, and he just like does these heavy stamping down the corridor, just going. No, 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 no! <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love Wishmaster. It's a shame they got ba- really bad. They did. They, yeah. they after the first one, they just went off piste, and they did. They're not like like the the whole shtick about the wishes and whatnot just becomes ridiculous. Yeah. I remember the second one. Doesn't it start off with a guy just being killed by lesbians? <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it, it just it goes. I wish I had two girls, and then they start like making out with each other, and they just. Oh, that that them. makes more th- sense. I thought you just meant yeah. in general, two lesbians killed a dude out for no reason. For no reason. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it, it's just like he, he, he makes that wish, and then they just kill him. There's no, um, there's no monkey's paw moment. Right, right. You know, it, it's it's literally just. Aha! Now you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of anyway, being dead, yes. Mm. <laughs> nice segue. Oh yeah. I've I've actually had five different segues, but I've never had a point to put any of them nah. down. So I've constantly been thinking forward. <laughs> <laughs> we have got some stuff to talk we about, do. ladies and gentlemen. Yay. We have got another preview to get mm. through. Um I don't know about you guys, but I have absolutely enjoyed these previews of late. Yeah, the the fact that uh, these things come out and it gives us a chance to uh, to have a focus, mm-hmm. <laughs> he says, uh, after an hour and 20 right. minutes of, uh, of talking. <laughs> Yay! Uh, <laughs> we've got to focus on something to talk about in the shows. Mm-hmm. And this one, being a complete AOS one, was right up my alley, and I am overjoyed by most of it. Yeah. Because some of it is really good, but I don't want, so mm-hmm. that's great. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but that is then completely undone by the fact there is some of it I do want and will probably buy twice. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. I mean, I, I, full confession. You know, I forgot. I forgot it was even mm-hmm. happening because I forgot it was Saturday. Yeah. I was having yeah, one of done. those like Backstreet Boys reunion tour moments. Yeah, yeah. Where I forgot everything about the day. I forgot my Heathen Knights book was turning up. I forgot Zigvold mm-hmm. was turning up. I forgot it was Saturday. And I didn't actually notice until after the preview was finished and then went back to look at it on Warhammer Community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At some... <clears throat> sorry, my uh, my voice went weird there. At some point, and we need to sit down and talk about the Heathen Knights Yeah, book. that's that's an episode, though, I think, because that's... Um, yeah, all to itself. Got it right it's here. It's there. very good. Yeah. It's very good. So, shall we get rolling with the stuff that we've got here? Yeah, because why not? I think if we start right at the we're top, gonna start we'll at the top. The thing. Start right at the top, and we're going to talk about the thing which I am least interested in, but the most surprised by. Mm. The Lumineth. Because there's more Lumineth. More Lumineth, yeah, that was a surprise. I thought they were all done. Yeah. Likewise, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, these these are even supersede the original release of the Lumineth. They're, they're all fantastic. They are. They're um... right. I'm going to get this out of the way uh, because I, I don't want to have the elephant in the room hanging mm-hmm. over talking about stuff. There's a new battle tome coming. Yeah. Now I know that it's easy to look at this and just go, "Yes," but the original Lumineth was pushed so far back that this plan to get this new battle tome out now it's tied into Broken Realms mm-hmm. and it makes a lot of sense when you think about it logistically, but. Good God, it's only been eight I was going to say, it's oh. less than a year, isn't it? It's really? It's been a year. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's not good. Are they that's selling it at a really... cheap price point to make it a bit more... No. no. Probably not. No. Probably no. not, no. no. I, I, I said they... that knowing there would probably be no, but I thought I should ask. Mm-hmm. What they really need to be doing, to be honest with you, is having something where you can take your old one in and get some money off this yeah, one. Yeah, agreed. Yes, agreed. It's not going to happen, cause... but yeah. No, no. I mean, they, they did say that if you don't want to pick this one up, um, there are other ways of getting the rules for all the new miniatures. Yeah. So that, that, that's okay, that's fine. Um, but people are in, going like... to buy the new one, yeah, obviously, because they just, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. for that completionism and whatnot, you know, and for whatever new lore is going to be in there and whatnot. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's slightly problematic. Less than a year for a new battle tome. It's rough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, that's worse than the Stormcast ever got. Mm. Oh, God, that's um, a and good I, point. I understand. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Stormcast got ridiculous at, at one point mm. there. Uh, and I understand why they had to bring this new one out, because they didn't have a full army. Right, sure. right. But then my argument becomes, but the Fire Slayers didn't get anything different. Mm-hmm. And they're a brand new army that's not a, a really full army. Mm-hmm. The Ideneth haven't had anything, really. Mm. You know, they got their first release, and they've had nothing since. Right. For God's sakes, the Caradron, as much as they have the great big um, ships, they don't have a huge mm. amount. I have every single Caradron release. Right. Yeah, it's not that much. It's uh, it gets expensive when you get the big, the biggest um, uh, Zeppelin. But yeah. even so, it's still not that big an army. Mm. Yeah, the Oryx, the Iron Jaws, they're uh, they're nothing. Right. They've got literally nothing. So it's. This one sits only. This one sits ill at ease with me. Yeah, I I can Purely. definitely understand that. I mean, the miniatures yeah. themselves are great. Oh yeah. Don't yeah. get me wrong. They're they're yeah. some of the best. They're they're so interesting. They're so well done. But I I <clears> wonder <throat> if it might have been a better idea to have just pushed everything Lumineth back until now. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Because with the way that things have kind of panned out. It, this this hasn't worked. And I understand that this has to come out because it's going to tie into Broken mm-hmm. Realms and all that stuff. Yeah, that that's perfectly fine. But this one really doesn't work for me. This is... Uh, it just feels kind of gross, unfortunately. Yeah. It does. It does. It feels like it's... I don't think it's anyone's fault. You know, no. I don't think that anyone sat down and had the decision of, right, we're going to do this. No, I, I uh, think this is a product of everything that's been happening, isn't it? You know, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, yes. absolutely. <clears throat> it's unfortunate uh, yeah. more than anything. And it is worth saying that you know, it's eight months now since the last one mm. came out, and they've just announced it. This isn't out next week. Right. This isn't out. This probably won't even be out in the next month. Mm-hmm. 
you know, this is a, it's a preview, so this is going to be a while long yeah. yet. But it's it's still it leaves a, a bad taste in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it reminds me of bad times when it comes to games work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's probably anything you can do to not remind people of those bad times is a good thing. Mm-hmm. But speaking of good things, let's talk about what you actually get because good God, there's some stuff. There's in here loads, which I am isn't there? Absolutely enchanted by. Um, the least of them is the uh, the sword masters, the, the blade, the masters. Venari blade lords. Yeah, yeah, they're they're yeah. sort of like rank and file elite troops, aren't they? They're sword masters of Hoth, yeah. surely, yeah. right? Pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Slightly uh, more elaborate, slightly more dynamic, yes. but yeah. yes. Very, very much more AOS. The mortal realms equivalent of. Yeah, with all the the flags so the, on the back, it, it gives me a, an old samurai uh, aesthetic because that's mm-hmm. what the samurai used to do as well. Have uh, the 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 clan uh, yep. flag on the back. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's a weird thing. They've got this weird halfway between Celtic mythology and um, Japanese mythology. Yes, yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, that seems to be the thing aesthetic. with the Lumineth. They seem to be blending yeah. lots of different traditions all together. Mm-hmm. And I think that it works really, really well. I mean, if we go down to the um, the ballista. Oh, uh, now I imagine this is something cool. like Lumineth and just Elven players have been waiting for for ages. Because this, do you remember <laughs> when the repeater cross bolt throwers defined the Elven races races back oh, in yes. the, uh, the the world that was? Oh yes, yes I do. Back in Warhammer yes, Fantasy I Battle, I imagine mm-hmm. they've been waiting for this kind of thing for ages. Because that's what this is, isn't it? There are three things in this miniature which have absolutely blown me away, and I love to bits. Uh, and I will give a fiver to anyone who knows what those things are. <laughs> before I say the the harp like um, quiver, mm. that thing is incredible. Uh, I love the little um, what is it the either stone shards that uh, are dotted around. They're sort of like lantern things. Yeah, they're uh, uh, protective. Yeah, I, I thought that's what they were. Sort of like generators. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But most of all, I love the hats on these guys. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but they remind me of something. I can't quite place it, but I adore them. I just I love the swoop of mm-hmm. them, the uh, the curve on them. Does it remind you of the shoe people? <laughs> <laughs> Doopy doop de doop. Maybe. Oh my Maybe that's what gosh. it is. Maybe I'm harboring a deep secret uh, nostalgia for the, for the shoe people. Right. Uh, who doesn't though? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just worship the shoe people as your god, George? No, definitely not. Slanesh is my god. Yeah, it's well established. Okay. Well established. Well, well Slanesh is known for his feet fetishes, so oh, the shoe god. people are Don't intrinsically take it down, uh... turned into that. Now I find myself wondering if there's. I, I imagine there is there is a certain kind of fan art of the shoe people online that I'm not going to search for. Oh, there definitely must be. There Somewhere. definitely must be. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. Oh no! The shoe people. <laughs> no, Quentin, stop showing so many feet in your things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just toes falling out of the shoe people constantly. No. <laughs> no. But what do you guys think of the um, the shoe people? Ballista? I think it's great. I think it's brilliant, and it's uh, it's one of those nice things where there's a there's a resonance with the way the high elves were in the old world. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. AOS is slightly different. There's a lot more in the way of shooting and long range attacks. You know, whereas in yeah, the old yeah. world there just wasn't. There were a few armies that did it, and uh, most others didn't at all. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you ha- you might you might have some people armed with slings mm. or some uh, short bows or something like that, but uh, yeah, heavy weaponry that fired over a, a large oh it, large area. Rare. It changed the dynamic of the game, didn't it? Like it completely mm-hmm. changed the dynamic of the game. So when you were fighting dark elves and high elves that had these like ballistas, you were in trouble. It actually gave oh, yeah. them something to get through chaos armor as well. Mm-hmm. It's like the only thing that could penetrate a chaos warrior's chaos armor. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the Imperial Cannon. That was about, yeah. about <laughs> it. Yeah, Chaos Armor was where it was at. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. It was. I remember uh, seeing a guy and he had, I think it was 12 uh, Imperial Cannons. Mm-hmm. 12 um, Cannons? Was that his entire army? It wasn't. I can't remember how he did what it. What else did he field? Because that would have been expensive, right? That would have been uh, mad. Mostly just peasants. Yeah. And Pe- peasants it, 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 and Cannons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was... Um, 
it can't have been a like an official army. No. Uh, yeah. It's just not possible. But it was that, and he was just uh, facing knights, mm-hmm. like Chaos Knights. Oh, dear. And even that didn't do enough damage to stop the knights. It wouldn't. Oh, to no. Him. Depending on the edition, it wouldn't, because Chaos Knights were like the heaviest, elitist uh, Fifth, cavalry. Fifth, I would say. Fifth. Fifth yeah, they were crazy chaos knights back then. Nothing could touch them. If you're listening, Scott, I remember. No. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> this is a guy who, who had a, um, a space marine chapter called The Man from Del Monte in his time. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. Moving on, then. Oh, um, yes. I'm really all up for the this. The terrain The piece. Shrine Luminor. Oh, I'm buying it's lovely. this. lovely. Are you buying it so you can turn it into the uh, the, the dwarf thing, which I buy <laughs> a Maybe. custom image of? Maybe. Uh, did you see that, uh, Mr. I did, George? I did. It was great. Yeah, it was a great custom. Mm, someone, If, you, if you're not nice. aware, I put up a picture that I saw on Twitter of someone who changed this. So the, the waterfall was lava, and there were some giant... Um, uh, dwarven symbols all over the place. It looked really nice. It looked, it looked great. Really fancy. It really did. And the the dwarves, I think, all Caradron and Fire Slayers, they don't have terrain pieces yet, do they? Not yet. The Fire Slayers have a shrine. Yeah. Do they? Okay. okay. A forge. Yeah. Uh, but that's literally it. Because nobody loves the Durians. <laughs> no, it seems not. <laughs> Apparently just, not. Just left there, you know, and dirty, filthy pegs mm-hmm. to get all of the terrain and all of the spells, but no, it's fine. But no, it's gorgeous. It's apps. It's probably one of the best terrain pieces out there. Mm. Well, it, it looks like like an actual piece of terrain. Mm. I'll rephrase that. It it doesn't look like something from a wargaming table. Yeah, you know, it looks like um, something you'd see in like uh, a really high end fish tank. Just like an ornament <laughs> or something like yeah, that. It, yeah, it's beautiful. It is absolutely incredible, and I'm going to end up getting. Yeah, it it's too. lovely. That I can already see like fifteen different things I could do with it. I mean, I've got an idea of something to do with it to make it into like a, a goblin, um, like a, a grot uh, shooting area. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Yeah, or like a, a little uh, temple for a uh, goblin shaman to live Just in. This is a diorama, yeah. you know. It's gorgeous. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've so many ideas that I'm gonna have to fight down the urge to get more than one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like it's ridiculous. By all accounts, I, mean, I also thought uh... the idea of um, getting three of them, putting them together, and just having this giant. Um, floating monstrosity. That's a nice yeah. idea. That's a nice idea. It has a, an interesting effect as well, by all accounts. It purifies the battlefield. Mm. Does that mean it will get rid of, like, um, any, any like... What, what, is there an equivalent to the, the Nurgle's Rot from 40, uh, 40k that you talked about last time, George? I think what it's going to do, it will, be, it will allow you to dispel endless spells. Ah, that's a good it idea. It purifies yeah. magic, basically. So that right. that would be my guess. And it, it will almost certainly have a negative effect on demons and on chaos magic and that kind of Ooh. thing. Yeah, that's a good point. That would be my guess. It's very such a lovely thing. I'm just weirdly happy to see more trees. Yeah, the little the bonsai trees. trees. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. so cool. Oh, man, this, this thing is just incredible. And of course you buy it and you get out and it's all grey plastic and you're just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but like the, for me, the the thing that really crowned the Lumineth release were the characters. Oh yeah. They're yeah. mad. They're mental. The guy on horseback. Tyrannot. Yeah, who looks like Tyrion, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I'm calling him Tyrannot. Oh my god, he's amazing. He's so it, pretty. He really is, but... Can you imagine painting that? No, oh, thankfully not. It's that. It's so elaborate. There's so much going on. It would be fun to paint. It would be a lot of fun to paint, but there's a lot going on there. Yeah, it, I think it would take a very, very long time to get that to look like how you want it to And that, mm. it's the kind it's... of miniature that requires a very particular painting style. It's got to be clean. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't yeah. just slap on, like, Agrax Earth shade nope. onto it. No, Without you, a lot of cleanup afterwards. You need to use technique on this thing to yeah. get it to work. It's a mm-hmm. stunner. I That's always been l- the elven way, though, hasn't it, for the most yep. part? They've always been a very hard, um, clean army to get. That's it. That's that's yep. what they favour. Yep. That's what they favour. Big, bright colours, you know, very clean painting style. Yeah. That is what they favour. 
uh, the, the dynamism of all of these guys as well. I mean, there's the uh, the characters after with the the sort of sorceress style character or with a sort of perching on the what is it the back mm-hmm. of the swordmaster. It's just brilliant. I I, yeah, I actually the- thought at first that she was kicking the owl. <laughs> I didn't realize there was a streak coming off. I thought that was her other leg just kicking the owl. So she's kicking the owl, yeah. Yeah, like get, get in there, you stupid owl. Get the gone owl. <laughs> I love the the idea that you've got these two, the the twins. Um, was it Eleanor? And... Uh, yeah, Elania and Elathor. That's it. Yeah, Elana. That's and very Tolkien as well. That that sounds like the names yeah. of um, um, Elrond's children. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like the idea of sort of recreating uh, Tyrion and uh, Teclis, mm. but with these new characters. Yeah, they're like they're almost um, they're the prodigies of them, aren't they? So they're like yeah, the younger yeah. versions. Mm-hmm. It's another model, However, though. You're like Jesus. How easy is it going to be to mess up and break? Oh God! Well, the contact point is yeah. really, Oof. really narrow, isn't Oof. it? <laughs> yeah, it looks great, but man, it looks like a strong breeze will take her off her brother. It does. It really mm. does. Very beautiful. I'm going to be honest about something here, though. Mm -hmm. You see her clothing. Mm -hmm. When they first turned up, all I could see was a Slipknot-style boiler suit. (laughs) And now I can't unsee it. I thought you were going to say a 90s tracksuit that would go up in flames in a second. (laughs) Oh, it is. Oh, actually, yeah, now you say that. Because the the white streak down the side. Paint it like nylon. Put like a Nike stripe If you buy this, you you have to either either get... You have to be good at writing. You have to put on either Adidas or Puma (laughs) onto it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. I'd a push. I, I'd accept a, Nike. I Nike. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Amazing. <laughs> I, I do want the owl, though. Mm. That's the annoying part. Because, yeah, I like having all the mm-hmm. little animals. That's another mythological <laughs> reference, I think. I think they're going for, like, Clash of the Titans mm. here. I think that's meant to be, like, Bubo. Oh, the, oh yeah, that God. makes sense. Yeah. Why isn't it a clockwork mm, owl? That would be fun, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. There's a... The next one, which I think is just a, a stunning piece of kit. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember any of the names for these because they went by so quickly mm-hmm. I couldn't write them down. Um, and the names aren't actually on the uh, the site. No, I, I don't know the name of this guy, but he's an impressive piece as well. Interestingly, it looks like mm. he's got like elements of a sorcerer and elements of a swordmaster as well. He looks like he combines yeah. the two traditions. And if you look on his back, mm-hmm. he's actually got the symbols for both Tyrion and Teclis, the sun and the moon. Yep, yeah. So he like combines the two into a really nice little all in yeah. one, which I think is a really cool idea. Very interesting uh, indeed. I bet he's going to be a bastard. I bet how like on the <laughs> battlefield, I bet he's going to be evil. I guess it depends oh, yeah. how how proficient he is with those two things. Is he mm. is he is he just okay in combat uh, mm. and he's okay in spells, or is he is he going to be like really An good in, in both? both? Yeah. yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just interesting. to balance them out. But I do like the idea of combining those traditions into one, you know? Yes, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Oh, my, my favourite is the, is the mage. Well, I'm going to talk about Dennis in a second, <laughs> because Dennis here is the... Right, I mean, there is one that is more physically impressive. Uh-huh. and we'll, we'll get back to him and his uh, uh, great secret of heaven in a second. Uh-huh. But Dennis here is the best thing in the world. Yeah, Look great. at his hat. Yeah. Love him. I, I don't care what his real name is. He is now and will always be called Dennis. <laughs> because he looks like the type of guy who would just sit around and start complaining about the uh, the work. He looks like an auditor or like someone who is, yeah, who's going around like taking notes on everyone, doesn't yep. he? Yeah. And I bet he talks very weirdly. Yeah. Uh, He's an assessor, isn't he? I'm going to have to write you up for that. Yeah, he, oh, I love yeah. him. He's just wonderful. Tech- and that's not even getting into the actual work that's been done on him because the sculpt is stunning. It's amazing. It's amazing. I love his lantern. Love He's his not going to do well in marshes, though, is he? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Bless him. Is he starting his own book it- of grudges? <laughs> <laughs> it's just one more thing taken from the dwarves. Yep. <laughs> no, I know what it is. Mm-hmm. He uh, he needs glasses, but he's left them at home. It's why he's holding it so far out. <laughs> <I think. laughs> no, but there's there's something about these hats, these um, sort of wide brim, droopy, swooping hats yeah. that I really like, and I can't put my finger on what they've it is. taken the whole sort of 
pointy helmet thing from the high elves and just gone nuts haven't they they've just mm. exaggerated yeah. it to the nth degree it's it one day i'm going to work out what it is about these hats that i love and i don't I honestly i don't know what it is but i just adore them i think they're just such a wonderful design i'm i'm personally not a big fan of the hats but they are a unique and interesting design which does set them apart and mm-hmm. it does give them a unique yeah. look at the very least yeah, so even you, if i don't you, visually like it or think they look cool I, as soon as I see that hat, I'm like, oh, it's the Lumineth. I know yeah, what you, it is You are going to know it's the Lumineth, aren't yeah. you? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the next one along... I mean, as much as I like Dennis, the next one along is the best of these miniatures. It's so well done. Oh, it's yes. incredible. The like, the, dy- the, the dynamism of it is just incredible. He's, he's irrepressible. <laughs> what can I say? I mean... The fact that they have now got to the point where they are sculpting goddamn clouds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually sculpting clouds and mist now. And he seems to be, like, driving it towards it, uh, before him with, like, a sensor or, uh, or something, doesn't he? It's so well done. Yeah. That has to be it's something they're going to lean into the, the Shadow Elves, right? Yeah. Oh, God. So, oh, something yeah. akin yeah. to that, at least. I've no doubt. The Umbra Neth are definitely going to have, like, lots of this stuff. Yeah. Or, they, or rather, when I say that, it should be, like taken as like shadow rather than clouds and stuff like that mm-hmm. just the technique will be carried over from sculpting this cloud to yep. yeah, sculpting yeah. whatever they do with them with those guys oh they're going to be like ephemeral they're going to have bits that are like melding into shadow and whatnot yeah. definitely undoubtedly here's a question for you would you be interested in using that as a uh, an alternate to a disc rider mm. oh yes oh yes in like that um a disciples mm. of zeech army yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, th- yeah this guy's yeah. gonna get converted to hell and back. Oh, he yes. is. He's gonna be Absolutely. a sorcerer of Zeech, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the big horns coming out mm. in front of his head help. You wouldn't have to well, do that but... much to him, actually. No, just snip off a couple of bits here and there. Cover over the uh... the Lumineth in fact, stuff. Um... You wouldn't even have to cover over the Lumineth. Just paint it differently. Yeah, yeah, it would work. It would work in a disciples yeah. of Zeech army. That would. Hmm. And that was the first thing I thought of was, oh my god, they've got their own disc yeah, rider. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. He looks like a May guy on a disc of Zeech, you know? Yeah, he does. And it's, I love it. It's like, come on. The other thing that I really like is the, um, you get the tree. Mm-hmm. And I, I love the fact that you're getting these little bonsai trees yeah. on the bases. And yeah. Like that's, that's wonderful. But next to that, you've got some reeds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Quite a few of them have reeds as well. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, who was it? The, the sorcerer dude? With the mm-hmm. sword, he's he's got some reeds. Um, I think most of them do. There's only a few that don't have, have little reeds. I, I know on the um, the the underworld set I have, there's reeds everywhere on there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little They're leaning heavily hide. into this like nature thing, aren't they? With the uh, the Lumineth. Can we have mm-hmm. a, a character a character like a son of Tyrion called Wheatian, please? <laughs> <laughs> he's just surrounded by wheat. So he sort of crosses over with the Sylvaneth a little bit, yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's he's like the 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 god of like I was gonna say corn, but not corn <laughs> of wheat. <laughs> the god of corn. <laughs> you mean the blood god? No, 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 no. The the harvest corn. Everyone oh. gets me confused with him. Yeah, We're different. yeah. I get it all so the you time. Just, you just brought this wonderful moment of the farmer goes out to collect his corn <laughs> and he just gets stoned to death by people who didn't understand. Erotic. <laughs> <laughs> That no no he wouldn't get stoned to death it would be a, a regiment of stormcast who just bludgeoned him with hammers right right <laughs> they all just come down and start beating hell it's like you don't understand oh. it's like no this is the law corn must be destroyed it's like damn it <laughs> you damn stormcast you've gone too far <laughs> oh no farmer staples what happened brilliant I went out to get the harvest and they thought it was a dark one <laughs> <laughs> but suspiciously, it would be as well. The be evil corn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's actually just growing teeth. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then finally, we have a um, well, not finally, but there's a standard a bearer. Of we have a standard bearer. Jesus, that's a big flag. Oh. It's lovely, oh, isn't it? It's really lovely, and all that detail I imagine is sculpted on, isn't it? Yeah. I would hope so, because yes. if that's just a giant flat area, mm. that's a bit of an art. Though, to be fair, I have seen some people online who do some amazing stuff with, uh, oh. with blank standards. Yeah, but, yep. you know, ho- yeah. hopefully, yeah, hopefully it'll be, <laughs> it'll be there so everybody can enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I much prefer the days where you just printed 
and photocopied and uh, cut out your own standard. Yeah, <laughs> just stickers, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. back in the day when it was just a sticker that you slapped on. Mm. Yeah, they, they were good days. <laughs> they were good days. And then you got an yes, alternate build for about. Severeth. Yeah. Who's gorgeous. Um, I like. I actually prefer this one. I think he looks great. What the difference is, I couldn't tell. I thought it was it's just the just, same it's one. It's less elaborate. It's a lot less elaborate, mm-hmm. the actual Severeth figure itself. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. What's uh, what's he called? Severeth, uh, the original. No, oh, the, this this version uh, doesn't actually tell me. No. That's wonderful. Uh, oh, there it is. H- Hurricane, the Spirit of the Wind. Yeah, it's lovely. Hurricane. Mm-hmm. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> <laughs> it's like Hurricane, but A-less. I love that sculpt. <laughs> I love it. It is an absolutely beautiful sculpt. You know, I love the idea of. Um, the High Elves, well, the, the Lumineth getting like, these avatars of the wild. Yeah, love it to you bits. Know, it really plays into uh, the things I love about mythology. Mm-hmm. And that's that's very much a thing that I, I like. I'm still going to end up buying this guy. Mm-hmm. Just just to paint. <laughs> you can convert him if you wanted, I'm sure. I don't want to. That's the yeah. thing. I, I love just what he is. I don't want the army. I kind of just want to paint just, him too, you know? What are, yeah. you, what are you, both elf lovers it. now? What, are you, what, <laughs> it's, what is um, this? I'm getting there, I'm telling you. With the yeah. the releases that they've been doing, I'm getting there. I like them a lot more now than I used to. <laughs> <laughs> it says something where I keep looking at uh, stuff that's coming out for the Lumineth and thinking, I could convert that into... Mm. 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 Yeah, that's uh, that's concerning. That's very concerning. No, I like them but, I mean, this, very much. This guy, he's absolutely beautiful. He's uh, just a stunning piece of work. Yeah, it's a lovely sculpt, yeah. that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Then, uh, Got the book which we've spoken we're about. Get, then we're going to get into some night haunt. Andy, do you want to take the night haunt? I don't know. Do I? Sure. <laughs> okay. We can do that. <laughs> uh, we have a new little spoopy ghost. Uh, mm. I'm not going to try. How do you say his name? Because I don't want to butcher that. It's a cruel, cruel ghost cruciator. Is that a name or is that a class? That's his name. That's what I thought. I, I, I didn't think it was a class. And they, he seems to be. They don't say a huge amount about it, though. Um, he seems to be a spooky ghost with a Y-shaped cross on his back. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's got mm-hmm. magic coming off of a little skull which he's holding, and some uh, torture devices. I, I, I think it's safe to assume he's probably going to be a buffing unit for the Night Horn. I think that's fair enough to yeah. say. Yeah. Since the Night Horn don't really have any good standard line troops, um, mm-hmm. and most of the single models are for buffing, I think this is going to be another one. Hopefully this will make the Night Horn uh, a little bit better. Because mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. I remember they, they still don't... I don't think they do desperately well still at the moment, so hopefully this Doesn't guy will help. It. Push it a little bit. I like the fact that he's got a little, a little gravestone on his base as well. That's nice and happy. Um, no reeds though what's that yeah no reeds he's got no wheat he's not the god of wheat he doesn't (laughs) believe in the wheat uh it seems it it looks like it'll go really nicely next to all the other kind of single based character units as well like the the lantern dudes and uh the the executioner he's Mm -hmm. if you Mm -hmm. weren't sure he's one of those kind yeah yeah Yeah, yeah. definitely he's some, some sort of torturer isn't he? his whole thing is torment and pain yeah Yeah. it it seems to be that he's a the remains, the the spiritual remains of a uh, like a dentist, a royal torturer, yeah. or a, an in- <laughs> a yeah. dentist, an inquisitor of like some an, description, maybe. Yeah, mm. yeah. Which is very, very nice. I'm seeing lots and lots of homunculi conversions in this guy's future. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just strip out all that. the 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 robes and stuff, and yeah, you've got most of it done. I was going to say it's not going to take much. No, it really, is a few technological I... elements thrown in there, a few tendrils, maybe, and he's he's done. He's ready. <laughs> All you have to do is just get a load of the, um, the uh, what the hell is it called, the Talos pain engine. Just get yep. the tentacles off that. Mm-hmm. Just add them into the body and yeah. you're done. Yeah, you're, you're kind of done. It doesn't. It hardly needs a thing. The uh, the saddest thing about him is though he can't clap. No, <laughs> he can't. No, he absolutely can't. I oh, know. Um, do you think, guys, that this means there may be a new book? coming for the for the night haunt for the night haunt yeah hmm that'd be interesting cuz like i say they, they it still feels like they're not a a great army to play mm. with so it, how long has it been since the first night haunt it's book came been out breeze, 3 years yeah it's a reasonably really? long time cuz it came out with huh. um it came out alongside the um AOS 2.0 AOS yeah, 2.0 yeah. Was, yeah that's right 
So they could do with a bit of an update now, couldn't they? I would agree. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be sneering if a new one came out with a little bit of uh, bits and bobs. They could do with the scenery piece as well in mm-hmm. the future. So that would be another yep, good reason yep. to mm-hmm. do it. Scenery piece, some endless spells. Uh, just no, there, they, got, they got they they got some the, endless spells. Did they? Yes. Oh, they did. Yes, absolutely. They got the little chest with skulls coming out of it. <laughs> I've and the big never scythe. thought that. Huh. Yeah, they, I think they were the first army, apart from obviously the Stormcast, to get the endless mm. spells because they came out at about the same yep. time. Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. That's so bizarre. I've never bought it. It does feel like there's going to be a big push for the undead again, doesn't it? It's very soon. So I imagine. Yay. I imagine there could it's... be a new book. Well, we're, we're going to get to uh, the future of the undead very soon mm-hmm. with um, something that popped up. Just a little thing. So. Yeah, just just well, yeah, no, not not the big thing. It's a, a littler thing, mm. but he but he is big himself. <laughs> mm. uh, and then we got uh, Garrett a Steel Solar. Wow, Rise. he's a big one, isn't he? It's the fact that it's the front of the bloody Hammers of Sigma mm. <laughs> cover. It's brilliant. Yeah, and, and I love the fact that they've sculpted it so it looks like they're coming down on the bolt of lightning. They've just smashed down. Yeah. Mm. And I love, and I do mean love this curve at the back mm. on the on the armor <clears throat> i want to see more of that because that gives him such a wonderful silhouette yeah he's great and compared to the the normal stormcast silhouette which is like flat shoulders then head having that thing gives him some kind of weird deep sea diver look which i'm i'm all about i i adore that. how I many space he looks like I think he looks more like he's in Terminator armor than yeah. compared to the other Stormcast. Yeah. This guy's going to have yeah. they're going to be space marine conversions just oh, everywhere yeah. for this guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you re- want to be really lazy, just make him into one of Dawn's boys and you've got even mm-hmm. less work to do. You're kind of there, yeah, aren't true. you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the only thing I think they missed out is they should have put some Nurglings running away from him mm-hmm. on his base. Sure. Well, I suppose you could do that yourself, but given the amount of Nurglings there are out there. True enough, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think that uh, Garrett, Garrett needs to have Nurglings constantly on his base going, fucking run! run yeah. <laughs> of course, uh, counterposed to him, we've got probably one of the most impressive miniatures that's been released for years. I mean, when this guy turned up, the first thought I had is, Andy's going to be happy because this hits everything. Yeah, well, it's a uh, skeleton. It's a perfect skeleton. It's, it's perfect. It's not an AOS skeleton. It's just a skeleton. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, good. This and is what the also, undead should be. It's it's an adaptation of the old White King miniature from Yonks ago. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. It's an updated version of the old Metal White King from God knows when. Like, really far years back. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But my God, is it beautiful. It's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. The everything about this is everything that I miss about the old world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It brings it up, brings it up to date, and I just went the old what? I'm sorry. No, no. It's just the mortal realms. That that's that's all I've got now. <laughs> because this hits everything. It looks like a piece of Mark Gibbons' artwork. Yeah, before. it's brilliant. Mm, yeah. Um, but then it, it looks like it's got like a Wayne England design mm-hmm. on the shield, and it's yeah, it it's as a concept, it baffles my head, and it it's just a wonderful, wonderful piece of oh, work. Oh, th- this I'm, is a giant gift to like long term fans of the undead. That that's what this oh, is. I would actually that, say the, can... the only downside to this is I think the colors picked for it are a little bit boring. Mm-hmm. I don't think it really emphasizes yeah. a lot of the stuff like the. Uh, the black with the kind of green highlight cape kind of mm. mold, melds in with the rest of the stuff. And yeah. I, I, yeah. I get why, you know, it's meant to be undead, so all the stuff's meant to be old and crappy looking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it all just kind of blends together, nothing really pops out. Yeah. I think if the cape was red, it would look a lot better. Agreed, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because then, then you've got that uh, focal point for the eye, it draws it into the, the body. Yeah. And I think if the armor on the, the skeleton himself was a slightly... Um, a different tinge. Yeah, like maybe you uh, made his armor like really rusty and something, mm-hmm. and you made the horse's armor more more of a hard black. That would yeah. help. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I ain't a high quality painter. I just thought that I looked at it and went, I think they could have done more interesting things with the colors on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I can I can see where you're coming from mm-hmm. there. But Jesus right. Christ! And there's a and there's something else that gets mentioned uh, when it comes to mm-hmm. uh, the White King. Accompanying mm-hmm. him are the numberless hordes of the Death Rattle. 
What does that suggest? New skeletons? I mean, you uh, can uh, kind of see newish skeletons in the background uh, of the video. Yeah, kind of, but they're they're incredibly blurry. At yeah. about if you if you want to time code, if you go for about forty seconds in, mm-hmm. you can see things in the background incredibly out of focus, holding two handed weapons. And if they do new skeletons, there will be new zombies as well. Because well, they've we've always seen come what as new a, zombies well, look like. Right, right. Potentially with the mm-hmm. with the, the whole um, what's it called, Grave City. Yeah, the Cursed City, yeah. yeah. The Cursed City, that's the sausage, yeah. Assuming See, that they follow I... the same visual aesthetic, I suppose. Yeah, Death Rattles just skeletons. Yeah, I wonder, because the, the way it's stated here, they don't call them the Legions of Nagash, they just call them the Death Rattle. Oh, no. yes. So are the Death Rattle getting their own... Are you going to have, like, a whole army of skeletons? I'd be alright with that. Well, doesn't that then make the Bone Reapers obsolete? What, the Ossiarch? Yeah. Well, it, de- it depends. Like, if they're loyal to Nagash, then mm. no. True. True. And it means that anyone, like any necromancer, any Tom, Dick, and Harry that's powerful enough uh, can summon a death rattle army. <laughs> while the mm-hmm. Ossiarchs can't be summoned. They have to be made, yeah. if I remember right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Ossiarchs yeah, are slightly right. different, aren't they? Because they are bone constructs. They're, yeah. They're like the True enough, yeah. hard elite warriors. Whereas I imagine if this is a book unto itself, which it certainly sounds like it is. These are going to be more like your classic, like numberless hordes of skeletons mm-hmm. and zombies and things. Assuming it is. Well, that kind of uh, f- finishes my uh, my thought then, because I've been considering getting rid of my Ossiac bone readers. Mm-hmm. If they're going to just go back to um, skeletons, then uh, yep, <laughs> bye bye bone readers. <laughs> I loves me classic skeletons, I does. Yeah, yeah and I, I wasn't sold on the visual aesthetic of the, the Ossiarchs for the most part. I thought they were okay, but no. they didn't they didn't hit me with the, the same kind of love that I have for just mm-hmm. basic skeletons. Because everyone, well, more like, you, um... me, Adam, we're all skeletons. We're all part of the Death Rattle Army, just not yet. <laughs> just not yet, yeah. <laughs> just not yet. And here, here's a horrifying thought for you. Your bones are always wet, and they <laughs> That's your true. bones. That's true. Are always wet. They're always moist. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, if they're going down that route and we're getting full blown death rattle army, mm. uh, yeah, I think uh, if anybody wants some mossy uh, <laughs> I I tell you what, I would love. I would love it if we had a uh, like the the Lord is uh, Kemler, but he's a skeleton <gasps> necromancer now. Oh, oh. yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? Because it would be like, he, yeah. he yeah. survived, but he's not alive anymore. Yeah, bring him mm. back. Bring back yeah. Kemble. He's got to have the hat, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. He's he's evil He's he's evil Gandalf. Yeah, he's got to have the hat. He's got to have that. You could have Krell with him as well, hanging yeah. about. <laughs> Why not? The yeah. Hanger on. Back, in the, uh, back in the days of uh, Fourth Ed... Uh, there was a guy I knew who uh, had Kemler running a, an undead army, and he was known because of his uh, Gandalf lookalikeiness. He was known as Gitdalf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's mean. That's really cool. I love it. But uh, oh man, I'm I'm honestly I'm all over the idea of if we're going to get an actual death rattle, just out and out skeletons in corroded armor. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm in for that. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because that I love that that entire image. The uh, the bone dry army coming along. It's why I, I never really like the Tomb Kings. I know that yeah. that's heresy. <laughs> because, yeah, it's I like the idea of skeletons coming out of the mud, coming out of the trees, coming out of the the forest. You know, them uh, like laying siege to the windmill on the hill type. Mm. Yeah. So when when they went the full Egyptian Tomb Kings, it was less of what I liked about the idea, about the concept. Yeah, yeah. I, I I like the idea that both existing because they both are very mm-hmm. very classic monster movie kind of creatures, mm-hmm. uh, just from yeah, different yeah. aspects. I think I, I would have liked the Tomb Kings more if their basic rank and file wasn't skeletons, if but they if mummies. they were just mummies. Yeah, yeah exactly. Likewise, yeah, yeah. yeah that would or be great something. fun. Yeah. Yeah, less skeletons for the Tomb Kings and more either lean into heavy Egyptian mythology or yeah. just mm-hmm. just keep to like that aesthetic more so than steal too much from like the skeletons because it did kind of it just it was like oh skeletons are everywhere. It's like yeah, ah, yeah okay, too much overlap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know you what can you do mean. a lot with totally Egyptian agree, yeah. mythology as well. 
So yeah, well, God, it's you, you so can. huge. It's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. yeah. There's so much yeah. you can do. There was never enough crocodiles. No, oh, I was goodness. thinking that as well. Yeah. Should have been more crocodiles. Big, monstrous crocodiles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could have had them as mounts. That would have been fun. Oh, skeletons, mummies riding crocodiles. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. you have them as undead crocodiles, obviously. Otherwise, of you course, get too yeah. close to... Um, what's the what's the giant crocodile for the lizard men? The Croxagore. Croxagore, yeah. You get too close <laughs> to that. <laughs> the Crapsagore. <laughs> oh. I imagine the, uh, the next one along got you quite excited, didn't it, Adam? going to buy five boxes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he's gonna get lots of cards no no buried in cards <laughs> these are lovely Although, sculpts aren't they mm, oh yeah yeah so we'll have around the world the uh head crackers mad mob oh my god these are the henchest orcs you've ever these henched. are like these proper th- realm of the beast orcs aren't they Yes, they are. They are gorgeous. They're really We've been lovely. missing these as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like because the the savage orcs have always kind of just been naked orcs. Basically, mm-hmm. they haven't ever gone down yeah. the uh, the real tribal aesthetic for right. them. Right. And it looks mm-hmm. like they are now, which is nice because uh, the 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 main shaman dude. I love gives me a lot of, Yeah, it gives me a lot of <laughs> Wurzag aesthetic yeah. vibes, but then yeah. goes even further because they go, give him almost like um, a tiki mask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which I really like. Yeah. I love it to bits. His mask is fantastic. Yeah, his mask is brilliant. I love his little snake. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a weird sentence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the just oh, here's a question though. Why do they have no toenails? Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and another question and something. So. When this um, these popped up, the entire no uh, bowstring kind of popped up again. Right, that, right. Yeah, that, that conversation always keeps happening. And I was looking at it, and I realised it looks like he's about to punch the arrow <laughs> through the bow. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't is be it, out um, of character for the orcs, would it? No, no, it wouldn't. Is it really an issue that people have that they don't have a bowstring in there? Because I, I would have thought it would be obvious why there's not a bowstring right. in there. Right. Yeah, it's it's something that's never been the case. Yeah, they've never had them. Yeah, right. I mean, it'd be it too thin. Sense. It's it's fine. Yeah, way just, too thin. Just imagine the bowstring. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. I mean, if you want to get some guitar wire and right. uh, make your own strings, feel free. <laughs> go for it. Uh, so let's go down these guys in order. Headcracker himself, or as I like to call him, Orc Wolverine. He is just thick. He's a bigger than He's beautiful. Yeah, he's he's very yeah. classic looking for an orc as well, which mm, is rather mm. nice. He's kind of archetypal, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He is. Um, I mean, the the problem with the the savage orcs as they stand now, the uh, the bone splitters, is that you've got that one box where it's hands up, hands down, mm-hmm. and they've got that um, long body, short leg, right th- thing that they've they've had for a while. Which I, I've always understood. It's uh, the Gorka Morker aesthetic, yep. and that's what they've they've run with for years. This aesthetic, having the the head slightly further down and having the thick center of mass and the thicker legs, oh my god, he's a nightmare. Yeah. He is. Yeah, there, there's nothing funny about this guy <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, he's coming at you and you're about to just be stepped on. I, I think he's brilliant. Mm. I think he's absolutely super. I hard. imagine this is an aesthetic that they're testing the waters with again, and this will probably carry over when there's the new Auric book. Yeah, I think you're probably right there. Um, I mean, oh god, the shaman. The, shaman the shaman's the best of the bunch. Yeah, he's, great. he's really good. Oh yeah, <clears throat> he's just great. He's and the the guy with the axe, he's got that little expression of "I'm gonna hit you." <laughs> and, and then on top of that, you've got the idea, you know, the um, the idea that these guys they're uh, they're off to kill the biggest, baddest monster. This mountain's living. Mm. We're gonna kill it. And Let's eat kill it. it. Yeah, that's almost as good as like the uh, the Slaneshi war band that are trying that torture it. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> leave this bloody mountain alone. What's it done to you? I'm really Stand happy to very, see very the aesthetic the uh, kind of carried over from the the chaos war band from Underworlds. The bit of um, animal skin. Mm. It's the same kind of yeah. style texture one that's on the the uh, the guy with the axe. Yes, yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. It's almost like a, some sort of croxagore hide or something, isn't it? Yeah, something with really tough scales, almost mm. crystally scales. Yeah. And it's nice mm-hmm. to see that that means that 
both this warband and the Chaos warband have clearly hunted and killed similarish creatures. Mm, they're operating yeah. in the same space. That would be explosive Which when makes those sense, two get together. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're both in the underworld, so yeah. uh, for for Shade Spire, so it makes sense. Mm-hmm. God damn it! Like it's just, <laughs> I I love them. I am so in for these guys, and I, I just want them. I want all of them. I'm gonna get loads of them. I'm just gonna get them, and I'm gonna be doing some convert work so each one looks slightly different. Uh-huh. And I'm just gonna build armies out of these guys. I mean, the sp- out of these the five miniatures. The yeah. smart move would be to buy one and then wait months and months for them to do the the slightly cheaper re- release without the cards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that's the uh, that's the thought. I mean, are you gonna do I'm that, or are that. you just gonna blow it and just go? I want them all. I want them now. <laughs> I'm gonna buy one set and then I'm going to wait because I'm sensible. Okay. And also, what are you really gonna do? <laughs> not the opposite to what I've just said. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, of course, there's a, a brand new starter set for Warhammer Underworlds coming as yeah. well. Um, as I realize the time's getting on, George, and you're gonna have to. Be I'm gonna have to shortly. bounce shortly. Can I? Can I? Before I have to bounce, ladies yep. and gentlemen, uh, I do apologize for that. Work calleth. There is just one thing I do want to comment on that maybe Adam, if he wants, he can splice in. He can leave it here. Fucking Balakor. Yep. What yep. the hell? That is one of the amazing, crazy things I did not expect to see. What the hell? Yeah. What does that and, even and, mean? Uh, like, for the, the the mythology, you know, Balakor is such an interesting, weird element when it comes to mm-hmm. chaos. Because he, he operates, like, in between all of the gods, you know? Yes. So what are the forces yeah. that include him going to look like? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and how big is he going to be? The miniature looks huge. Well, I thought it was going to be um, Malarian mm. to start with, when that wing turned yeah, up. Yeah, that's what I would have thought too. But then I realised that it wasn't, and it was Bellacore. It's Bellacore. He's, he's just sitting there going... Well, right. Please don't let him be the son of Slanesh. No, I mean, I think he, I, I think he's going to be one of the Broken Realms books, isn't he? That'd it be good. To be. That'd be good. Well, he's such a significant character. I mean, he is like mm-hmm. the demon equivalent of Archeon. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Only even more oh. powerful, you know. He's, but he's the the thing that limits Balakor is that he's beholden to the gods, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's got to do as he's told, basically. But what if that's not true anymore? You think oh, he might be set totally. free? I think he might. I think he might. Can you imagine how good it would be if Baylor just went and just smashed a hockey on the shit up? Well, you've got to... I mean, <laughs> this is the thing. If he is set free, if he's not beholden mm. to the chaos, then you've got probably the most powerful single entity in the mortal mm-hmm. realms. He's the first demon prince. You know, he's got the yeah, blessings yeah. of all the chaos powers. He's so... Un- he's worshipped as a god himself. In lots yep, of yep. places, you know? It, uh, the first thing he will do is go to the, the Varen Spire and kick the shit out of Archeon. Oh, please. That's the first please. thing he will do, you know? Uh, wow. <laughs> or maybe, maybe he'll go to Olgu because he believes that that belongs to him. Oh. Because he's the Shadow oh. King. That's interesting. In like pushes the, the shadow elves out, which is how the shadow elves then become part of this maybe um, overlying elder, uh, elder um, elf grand alliance. Maybe that's that what's going to happen. Maybe it's going to be like that... a war between him and Malarion, You know? Oh, the shadow war. Yeah, because oh. I mean that's part oh. of the new background they introduced for Balakor in the uh, Slaves to Darkness book. Yeah. Uh, par- apparently, he originally did rule Ulgu. For a while, mm, right before Malarion kicked him out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so well, he's got pretty beef. impressive he's, to do that as well. Then, he's right? basically got beefs with everyone. <laughs> he hates everyone. You know, the, he hates the Chaos Gods because they enslaved him. He hates Archeon. He hates everyone. <laughs> oh, how good would it be if he just makes best friends with Teclis? Oh, oh my no. God! Oh. There is only one creature who has ever. Managed to cause as much chaos and disorder as I. It is <laughs> you, you Teclis. Yeah. Uh, but like, 
we haven't seen the whole miniature yet, but the little bits we've no. seen are insane. He looks like just a, a massive, wondrous piece of work. Well, they had to update him, because um, the original miniature, uh, it never fulfilled the criteria. It was never impressive no. enough. He's the first mortal elevated to demonhood. I mean, my God, he is like a unique entity. He's, a, he's the equivalent of yeah. a Primarch, you know, a demon Primarch. Yeah, yeah. So... He needs to be impressive. He needs to be really impressive. I keep trying to work out what the narrative thoroughfare is going to be for AOS 3. Mm. And I can't put my finger on what it's going I to be. I can't either. I mean, it seems, from, from what I see from this release, I think it's clear the undead are getting broken up. Yes. Into yeah, bits yeah. and pieces. So death rattle. Does that mean Nagash is about to get a I think so. I think Nagash is going to get toppled, you know. I don't think he'll, you know, he can't mm -hmm. die. But I think he's going to no. be, like, toppled from his position as, like, the, the supreme lord of the undead. Mm. I think maybe the vampires certainly are going to be free of him somehow. Mm -hmm. Don't quite know how. And I think we're going to get a Soul Blight book. Woo. I think you're absolutely on the money there. I think the Soul Blight are getting something. Yeah, well, with the Cursed City stuff, they're obviously introducing, like, little... Like, there's, like, things that look like vampire infantry, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, maybe you could field an army of vampires, you know? That'd be fun. <laughs> That'd be fun. I want that but yeah, so badly. But yeah, Balacor. Surprising stuff. And uh, with that, Absolutely. my loves, I've got to bow out, unfortunately. I apologise for cutting it so short, but uh, my compatriots here will continue on, I'm sure. Yeah, we will struggle on with the uh, you know the, the horrible bit of mm. news that we've got to get through next. Mm -hmm. I think it's not going to take any kind of, course. of joy or excitement mm. to get through. I, you I've know. got, you know, just before I go, I've got to say I'm getting that, that game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who isn't? Who is not going to get that game? You think I'm only going to get it the one? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one, I want the game so I can play the game. Yeah. Two, I want the game so I can take those miniatures yeah. and add them to existing armies yeah. that I already have. Mm. I, would, I would love a regiment Damn of those it. zombies, I can tell you. I would love one. Yeah. My God. Righty ho, My guys. God. I am going to skedaddle. <laughs> and bye-bye, uh, all you listeners out there. Bye-bye, George. Bye-bye. All right, Andy. Hey, it's Adam. Just, Hello. It's just you and me. Me and you. Are we? Are we ready to enter the cursed city? Uh, I'm not coming over to yours today, am I? <laughs> uh, no, that's against the law. <laughs> that's that's true. But I would describe where you live as the cursed city. <laughs> no, Carlos, just the blighted city. Oh, it's okay. It's easy to get mistaken. It is. So, the Cursed <laughs> City's got some brand new bits shown, and we now get a full idea of what the full box looks like. I was going to say, it's the whole thing now, right? They've shown everything, right? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, they have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it, I don't want to say that it's um, large and intimidating, <laughs> but... Sh can, can, I, can, I, can I talk about one issue that I have with it, which I think is fairly Hit important? Me. Yep. I think the board sucks. The board looks small. I don't. Oh, it's not just it's small. I think it's it's like it's very boring and it's very basic. I I don't know what you yeah. do for a, uh for ex an expanding city to to make it big and intricate and interesting. But I think they mm -hmm. did the Blackstone Fortress map layout better. It was more yeah, visually yeah. interesting. This is this reminds me a lot of um the Silver Tower. And rem I think people had issues with how the board worked or looked visually for the Silver Tower as well, didn't they? They did, yeah, because it was it was a little bit um, bland. Yeah, and even I, though there was lots of detail, there was a little all over the place. Yeah, and I think this is going to suffer the same problem. It's really the only issue I have. But I remember I looked at the board and went, "Oh, hmm." I want to know if the the board pieces are double sided. They must be. I think it's pretty standard yeah. to have these board pieces as do, uh, double sided this day and age. They were uh, for yeah, the Silver yeah. Tower as well, right? They were, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't say why they wouldn't be here. I think mm -hmm. you can even tell, like, if you look at the the image of the board, there's the uh, the blue outside area, and then you've got two or three pieces which are like the orangey, what I would guess inside area. So I'm guessing they'll each yeah, side yeah. will be either an outside piece or an inside piece. Yeah, I'd, I'd say you're probably absolutely bang on the money there. Um, I'm trying to work out if there's those little door pieces are just cardboard or if they're clips. I think they're just cardboard. I think so. 
which is a shame. Um, it would be so better I, if it, they were clips, wouldn't it? Just so they could hold together the board. But again, it's it's one of those things where it's the it's after looking at everything, it's the only thing I don't like. Or especially yeah, yeah. especially when you look at the quality of the miniatures, and then you look at the yes. quality of the board. There's there's a at least from my my eyes, there's a big visual disconnect about how much effort was put into one thing versus the other. And it's not just to shit on the game, just because I I just think. Mm. Again, like look at look at the board for Blackstone Fortress, the hexagonal kind of interlocking look, I think yeah, worked yeah. a little bit better. I think the problem there is that you're trying to create the idea of alleyways and yes. little houses and little uh, little rooms and things, so that something like the hexadecimal board wouldn't work. It has to be very thin pieces. Yeah. However, I agree that. I think the pieces themselves look a little small. There's that, that too, they yeah. Be, they should be um, like little thin pieces that then open up into these massive bits, you know, these mm. great big rooms that you can have swarms in. And yeah. I, I think that that's a bit of a, uh, a weird one. Yeah. Um, I do like, though, if you look at the, the box... Uh, preview everything that's in the box there seems to be some kind of template that says whether it's day or night uh, uh that interests me quite greatly is that the the counter yeah the counter one side it's dark one side it's light oh right that's what that is yeah no that's a that sounds like a an, an interesting mechanic obviously for vampires yeah. and stuff it's probably incredibly essential <laughs> yeah very much so so i mean if that if that's what it is i'm really in for that mm, definitely but I have the, a feeling, um, though, but like before anybody goes, oh, well, the vampires just die in the light, it'll probably not be like that. It'll probably be like an no. overcast day, so they can go out into the sunlight, but their powers aren't quite as powerful as like a full moon, for, for example. Yeah. I think that's but an easy guess. It's the, the realm of death, so it's, it's not going to be uh, bright sunshine and meadows, is it? No, it's not going to, no. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, yeah, I totally agree with you on the board. Mm. It's difficult to see from here how much detail is actually on it. Yes. Uh, so I think that's uh, worth saying. But I think that it doesn't look like there is enough board pieces. No. It, looks, it just looks small. If that's all of the but, board pieces, I 100% agree. Hopefully there's there's more than they're showing. Hopefully they're not going to rely on the whole, uh, if you want to expand the city, you're going to have to buy three or four extra add-on sets. I'm sure yeah, there will yeah. be add-on sets as well. Definitely. Oh, there will be. Yeah. I just yeah. hope it's not it's it, it's it's not relying too heavily on that unless they're doing this so the game price is like a lot cheaper than it would be if they added in more game pieces for instance yeah, or board pieces considering the amount of plastic that's in there the cardboard wouldn't change the price that much yeah that's what i was thinking i was i was, yeah. I was like mm, i'd be surprised if it would make that much of a difference plastic versus card yeah. kind of price but yeah absolutely i mean the um there was something I was going to say there, and it's just gone completely out of my head. The, I think the main thing is that they've got everything on the board mm. there. You know, there is like tons and tons of stuff on the board. We, you, you won't see that in a game, I wouldn't have thought. No, probably not. You know, that, and I think that kind of gives you the illusion of it being a bit uh, smaller than it actually is as well. Mm, perhaps, yeah. But, because you, it's so cluttered. I mean, they've put everything on the board in order to give you the idea. Because, I mean, that just looks like a single fight taking place. Yeah, yeah. And that makes it look smaller than it is. Uh, whilst in the actual thing, you'd be going from area to area to area. Uh, and I assume that you'd be taking bits off the back and put them onto the front as you're rolling through the city. Oh, again, kind of like what um, Blackstone Fortress did in a way. Yeah, yeah. I can so see that. that. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be how it goes. So, getting into the miniatures and the lore itself, we have a collection of heroes. Ah! Now... I'm going to struggle in remembering all of these names again. So, <laughs> I did actually have a little thing uh, telling me all their names, and I have managed to close the window that had it. Oh, so no. That's, uh, <laughs> that's absolutely wonderful of me. I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased with myself, so I'm just trying to reopen the Warhammer Quest website now so I can get out of that. And, of course, it's going to go slowly. There we go. Woo! Right then, so first of all, we have a knight, and I'm going to be honest with you, Imelda Borofsky. Is that Brienne Rostov, of Tarth? Sorry. Yes. Okay. She is a wonderful, wonderful image. I like the uh, the big 
eagle that goes over the shoulder. But what I really like is the fact that what she is wearing is less interesting Stormcast armor. Yeah, she's she's not a Stormcast, she's just a, a person. She's a human. Yep. Yep, she's a, a knight. Yeah, a crusader a, or something like that, yeah. Like a paladin, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like that. It's, it's nice not to see, oh, hey, we decided because you don't have enough of them, here's another Stormcast. Yeah, absolutely. I think a Stormcast would kind of push this... Uh, this party too far in the wrong direction. They'd be a bit too strong, theoretically, if they had a storm yeah. cast. Yeah, I agree. But the fact that she's... The armor that she's wearing, it shares element uh, element designs with the storm cast armor. It's just not as ornate. It's mm. not as um, uh, high-tech, for want of a better term. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So especially over the shoulders and on the, uh, the pauldrons, it's really, really obvious. And I think that's a very clever idea. Yes. Because he... It uh, gives you the idea of who she is and what she is. And it's not a bad face sculpt either. No, it's pretty good, yeah. I, I would say mm. if they were going... I, th- I think it's pretty obvious they were going for Brienne of Tarth from Game of Thrones. I think... Absolutely. I would be yeah. shocked if like the sculptor went, no, never heard of her. <laughs> I'd be like, come on now, mate. <laughs> uh, but I think going for that has worked. It's, they've, they've done exactly what they clearly were setting out to do. Unless and, they're lying uh, yeah. to themselves. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got Jelson Darrock as well, who we've uh, we've seen before, the witch hunter with the stake gun. Yes, we know. You remember what he's like? Why does he need such a big stake gun? We know. Oh, now we know. We know. Now we yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. Fair enough. He was prepared. That's good. And then we've got my favorite character, Dagny Holdenstock. Yeah, the he... trade commodore. Yeah, he looks great. He's a, an amazing Caradron overlord. He, he's he's wonderful. Is, it, is this like the, the first time we've had, is this the first time we've had a Caradron Overlord who's not completely decked out in armor? Uh, yes. I mean the the commemorative miniature of um, ah, oh, it's his name, the Brewer. Santa came out. No. No, oh, it's not the Santa one. Okay. Uh, he looked a little bit like Santa. Yeah. Um, Did he come out for Christmas? Yeah, he came out for Christmas. Right. Yeah, is the one oh, I'm God, thinking what's of? What's his name? Gary. No, I can't. I can't remember his name now. Okay. Um, he um, he had a a, a version. You could build him a version that was a bare head, which is what I built him as. Ah, okay. Um, and then you've got this guy who has a bare head, but he's still got a metal beard <laughs> because that's attached to his suit, and that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I love his jacket and his little belt, and he is brilliant. And I just. I want that. I think I it's that. a real shame that the Caradrons didn't go more into this. Like this wasn't the ba- the look of kind of more of the basic infantry, and the the heavier yeah, infantry yeah. had the harder armor, like the whole armor look. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd agree. The uh, the light infantry for the Caradrons more like um, Sh- armor over leather. You know what the than... the Caradron Overlord's basic infantry should be? Do you remember? Um... Oh, what, what were they called? Uh, the the mercenary faction at the end of that Warhammer era. What were they called? Mercenary uh, faction the, had the their dogs own of war. dogs of war. Do you remember the sh- the the pirate dwarves in that? Oh, um, long drongs slayer pirates. Yeah, who just wore pants and they had like some swords and some no shirts and they had like the bandanas around the heads. Yes, yes. They look like proper pirate dwarves. That's what I think the rank and file should have looked like. Bloody hell, long drong. Because look at this guy. This guy looks like he's the captain of a ship. Easily looks like that. He really does. And then you yeah, could easily yeah. see his infantry, or like his basic troops would be the, the I'm only wearing pants dwarf. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Not that, <laughs> I th- can th- see it. This just shows like how much better this, the ideas behind AOS are now to when AOS started. Absolutely, yeah. Now that you're getting to see what people can and can't do with it. Mm. Um I mean, this guy is just incredible. He's great, yeah. And, and I want to see more of this. I want to see the character and get this kind of love through the, the entire range because look at him. Yeah. Just fucking look at him. Yeah, I, it goes back <laughs> to what you, you said jokingly to a point earlier on, which is uh, the dwar- no one loves the Dowie. <laughs> no. No one loves the no. Dowie. The Dura didn't get nowt. Nope. You know? it's, I mean... What's the biggest thing that's happened to uh, anything with the dwarf name over the last year? Ah, uh, I don't the know. The Chaos Dwarfs, the uh, Legions of Asgoth got discontinued on Forge World. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah. yeah that's, that, that's it. That's the biggest thing that happened to them. God damn it. Yeah. And that's yeah. just depressing. 
It really is. Come on. Gonna give me more Juridin. I love my Juridin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, th this guy, I, I love the Lord Commandant. Um, this is one of the reasons I want to get two of this box. One for him to go into the game, and then one to actually go into my army. Mm, okay, I can see that. Would because you would you convert if, him? Do you think like pull off his head no, and give him an armored head? No, I'd, no, I'd leave him exactly as he is. He's beautiful. Okay. Because um, I did see that somebody mentioned that this box does come with um, rules for everybody in AOS. Oh, that's really good. That's a great idea. I, I mean, it should yeah, be an obvious idea, but it's 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 good mm -hmm. that it's there. Because back in the day, they wouldn't yeah. have done that. I'm sure. Uh, no, no. It, well, th that was the idea. It was it? Uh, you bought a box set, and that box set was just a box set for the box set. Yeah, and if you were going to get any rules for it, you'd need to buy a, a book or something extra later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but surprisingly enough, as much as I absolutely love the Lord Commodore, he's not my favourite of the, the box. He's probably my favourite character, but he's not my favourite sculpt. Oh, okay. It better not be the smelly elf. Well, should we get the smelly elf out of the way just so yes. uh, we, we get it done? It's a very good uh, design. So I just don't like elves. Mm. So... Qualiths the Exile. Do you want to say uh, that again? <laughs> Qualiths the Exile. Some lovely sibilants for you. Silly, hoity-toity elven names, as usual. Uh, she comes from the Oak of Ages past. What? Are you actually... Is are you, Do you not just mean the Oak of Ages, or is it written weird? No, that's what it says. Uh, Taking an arm-thick splinter of the Oak of Ages past, she has created a quiver of magical arrows. Oh, okay. Obviously, That's what it says here. Um, I mean, yeah, absolutely, great design. Yep. Uh, I like the fact that she has horns. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now, are, are they are they just part of a headdress, or are they actually coming out of her head? I, I'm not sure. I assume that they are part of the headdress, but because of how small that connecting point looks, I'm going to pretend that she has horns. And because, like, the elves are the elves at this point, it could easily be the case that she's just got horns. Easily. Yeah, she could be could be one of the Kernoth. Yeah. The Kernothi or whatever they're called. The, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, really nice sculpt. Really dynamic. Um, probably the least interesting. Yeah, it's kind of a standard elf in a lot of ways, which is yeah. fine. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. And then we move on to... <sighs> Glario van Elton the Third, who you might remember oh. from Blackstone Fortress, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they they took everything I love about uh, Janice and they made him AOS. Yeah, pretty much. He looks great. <laughs> he is. He's got such swagger. <laughs> he's so good. I love him. He just looks like an absolute prick. <laughs> you know what? I would What's have liked. I would have liked him to have maybe like a a bottle of booze like hanging off of his belt. Mm -hmm. So maybe like yep. he's a drunk or something. I've just realised he's got a mirror. Oh yeah! Oh my god! Mm. He's got a mirror is, hanging off. Is his that belt. for vanity or is that I for, for vampires? something? Yeah, actually, no. That's a good point. Yeah, of course that'll be for vampires. I'm dumb. Well, it's probably both. It know, could be. So. Yeah. I don't actually know in AOS if vampires cast a reflection or not. I would imagine no. I would imagine they'd mm. probably stick with the the usual. Ideas of vampires or vampirism, right? Surely, yeah, I would have thought so, but uh, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the rules are for them. No, no, but yeah. I mean, this guy is he's wonderful. I love the pose he's in, I love his flintlock and his the way that he's just striding forward. He's got his hand resting on his sword, he's got his mirror, he's got his little bag, he's got his coat over his shoulder. He does not give a shit. I love the fact that due to the way the photo's been taken, it looks like he's got one shaved eyebrow. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think he's fantastic. He is absolutely wonderful. Mm, yeah. But once again, still not my favourite in the box. Okay. Should we move on to my favourite? Oh, okay. I'm I'm kind of surprised. The the converted it's... into a, a necromancer dude. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Uh... Oh, no, actually, I put this the wrong way around. Doesn't matter. Um, so, uh, this guy isn't my favourite oh, in the okay. box. Uh, I got all confused there because the uh, the order got mixed up and I can't get back to him. No! Ah, come back here, you faithless... There we go. So, Octoran Glimscry, who... I mean, that is a beautiful, unsettling sculpt of just... Why? Why did someone take a Necron and make him flesh? <laughs> a Fleshtron. Yeah. I mean, 
he's an unsettling son of a bitch. Like, yeah, I, I like as soon as I saw him, I was like, yeah, you could convert him into a necromancer, and a necromancer that I wouldn't think looks shit. No, no, I think he'd be a great necromancer. Yeah, but he, from what I understand, he is a necromancer. Is he? Oh, okay, uh, even better. Yeah. So, uh, Octarine has spent many years in the realm of death, experimenting with a mortality manipulating realm stone known as Gravesand. He once worked alongside Torgilus the Chamberlain, but now he seeks to end his former colleague's experiments and free the city from his curse. Oh, that's interesting. So he's, uh, he's an order necromancer. Huh. I suppose that makes sense, because there was a, a some well, a somewhat order necromancer in one of the Gotrek books. Mm. There was, yeah. yeah somewhat. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Not quite, but also, yes. yes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. But, I mean, this guy looks both like a, a flesh necron and like the uh, the lead singer from a Tool video. I think he's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. You can just imagine him, like, just singing weird lyrics at you. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really just want to animate his mouth so he's just singing Mudvayne's Dig. <laughs> erg, Is that going to be your erg, new project? Erg. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I might do that. <laughs> what do you think of uh, our little Fleshtron here? No, yeah, he's great. He looks very good. Like I said, it's the first time I've uh, they've done a Necromancer sculpt in a long time, which I didn't think looked poop. Uh, so mm-hmm. that that's definitely like a bonus. Um, yeah, he's got a really uh, good distinct look to, uh, about him in general. So I'm, I'm all yeah. behind it, really. And then we move on to the Warrior Nun. I would not have pegged this as, in quotations, a warrior nun. I, again, it looks like a spellcaster to me, rather than a yeah. than like what you would consider a sister of battle kind of battle nun. Cleona Zeitengale, a missionary of the cult of the comet. I mean, yeah, she's a, a Sigmarite nun, you know. Yeah, um, a sister of battle, basically. A, yeah, she's an AOS sister of battle. Yeah, and she's she's decent enough. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot there I quite like. I like the uh, the stakes in the the belt. Yep. yep. Uh, the weird headdress and all that type of things. Really, really nice. Is my least favorite. I would agree with that. It's it's not one of my personal favorites either, to be no. honest. And then we get onto the last one, and here he is. This is my favorite of the uh, the box. This is the one that made me giddy. Why did he make me giddy, Andy? Well, it's because it's an old school ogre, right? That's part of it. Uh, it's an old school ogre, right? Okay. He looks like a ogre from um, some artwork in, uh, I think, I want to say third edition uh, Warhammer. And if you look at his shoulder pad, mm-hmm. that is a pure Blanche from Warhammer Fantasy Battle design. Oh, is it? Okay. That Right, That that has been taken from something... In Warhammer Fantasy Battle, I'm telling you right now, hmm. I am in love with this sculpt. I think it's incredible. I it's nice to see like an ogre who's not like kind of squat and fatty. Yeah, kind of like the yeah. old Warhammer ones were, or the ogrens were always kind of squat and chunky as well, but not mm. like in a menacing way. This guy looks like he's big. Yeah, yeah. It's I. I don't like the Frostmore tribe. Ogres. Oh Ogres. no, I, I was I was never yeah. I always thought they looked silly. Yeah, it it doesn't work for me no. at all. Um and then yeah, the I like ogres to look like big people who are bestial, you know. Yes. That's my idea of what an ogre should look like. And they've absolutely knocked it out of the park with this guy. Mm. You know, th- there's little element designs in there where you can see parts of the um the frostmore and whatnot, you know, the fur around the legs and the uh, the big spike on the hand. Um, but apart from that, yeah, he is he he has stepped out of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Yeah, definitely. And that's just beautiful for me and that I'm i I'm so happy with him. I mean just look at him <laughs> <laughs> You like him, do he's you? A beast. He's, a, he's all he's right. A, He's an absolute beast, and he will eat skeletons, and that's just the best thing in the world. I would not recommend eating skeletons. That's the idea that he's um, acquired a, a taste for long dead flesh, and will happily eat skeletons. <laughs> just, <laughs> I am the strongest ogre in all of Shaiish. I will eat zombies. Nom nom it's nom. Just, uh, the the quote from him is, "I ate one of those geists once." Waste of time. Don't think I'll bother next time. It makes sense. Yeah, oh, that's a bad call. <laughs> it's just great. Butrog corpse eating. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love him. I mean, the, you know, the carriage run really sings to me. The Everything about him is just, like, beautiful, and I, I want thousands of that design to start hitting my shelf. Mm. But Buttrog just... That connects to Little Adam as a, a young boy who was just starting out with Warhammer, and it just brings him back to the fore and makes him it just makes me giddy. Would you call I, him Butrog the Leaper? <laughs> Butrog the Leaper. <laughs> he leaps and eats. Nom nom nom. But yeah, I'm I'm all in for him. Yeah, he's, Andy, do you want... he's he's probably. Oh, I don't know if he's he might be one of the best sculpted ones. I think visually mm-hmm. he's probably my favorite as well, just because he's so in, imposing compared to the rest yeah, of them. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Solid. I, I'm I'm so excited for this. Do you want to take the enemies? Uh just the the enemy characters or the basic enemy. Do you want to take the basic enemies because I think the enemy characters are going to take quite a lot of conversation. Sure. Okay. So we have uh, swarms of bats and wolves, but not wolves. Uh, we've got feral bats. Some interesting mm-hmm. designs with the bats. Just the normal bats, and then there's a really big fat bat as well. I like the big fat bat. Mm-hmm. I like big fat bat. Also candles. <laughs> yeah, a lot of candles. Yeah, I didn't notice any candles on the heroes' bases, but apparently uh, bats are all about their their pillars and candles. Uh, but Rockley Leaper has a candle. Does he? Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he, he does have a little candle. It's a very small candle. It's a very very small candle. Not that that should reflect his manlyhood. <laughs> but it might. I don't know. It's not all about the size Small of your candle. candle. It's how deep the wick. <laughs> uh, we've got some dead rats. Uh, not live rats, not scaven rats. These are undead rats, which is something it's I don't think rats. we've ever seen before. Not like this, no. No. No, now, whenever we've seen rats, they've always been alive, but no, these ones have mm-hmm. little holes in them uh, and little little unfurry skulls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, were you happy to see some some rat packs? I I am always happy to see swarms of rats. I don't know. And the I fact don't know that they're zombie that. rats, <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that zombie rats makes it better, and the fact that they're zombie rats which get used as spies for one of the character, the enemy characters, is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So n- nothing I would say is really special about how either of these two like horde uh, pieces mm-hmm. are. Uh, next up, we have uh, what are these? Uh, they're not the Dead Walker zombies. Next, are they? Or are they the no uh, Kusaragi Night Guard? Are they the Kusaragi Night Guard? The kind of zombie-looking dudes with the lumber axes. Um, I don't actually. Are know they what the Ulfin Watch? No, the Ulfin Watch are the skeletons. So they must be the Kusaragi Night Guards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, yeah. Inc- super duper Dark Souls. Some of them have keys. Mm-hmm. One of the rats mm-hmm. has stolen a key, <laughs> or is bringing it back to him and going, "He is your key." <laughs> I don't know which. Uh, they Have both look were... very happy, which I'm very happy to see. <laughs> they're loving life and they're loving the big axes. They've got a very Kislev look to them. A lot, a lot of like the the uh, the kind of guys who have fur on themselves remind me a lot of Kislev kind of yeah, visual yeah. aesthetic, which is again quite nice to see. There's a lot of Russian taking place here. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. It's the fact that these guys are zombie ogres. That's that. Is really that what they me. are? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Because there's a big ogre theme taking place here. Uh, okay, I didn't realize that. I just thought they were like really hyped, uh, super buff dudes rather than like no. ogres. But that's good. That means even mm. ogres can get turned again. I don't think we've ever seen like ogres before no. Zom- zombie ogres or obs- uh, undead ogres we've seen undead giants yeah. but that was years and years ago obviously but yeah we've, we've never had zogas before zoga Ooh, that's a good name i like it a bit of the zogs <laughs> yep <laughs> a bit of zog <laughs> that's really nice well, uh, it's better than ogbees <laughs> yeah. ogbees i'm not a big fan of the ogbee ogbee <laughs> Uh, as you said, we've got the Ulfin Watch. There's a there's a lot of wolf theme here. Um, yes, makes yes, me think is. of the Cult of Ulrich, which mm, is probably deliberate. Uh, yeah, yeah. We have quite a few versions, uh, different versions of skeletons. A lot of them are holding spears. They're all very similar. You know, they've they've all got the legs in specific poses um, and sticking the the swords and shields up into the air. Well, I, I like the I like the the skeleton that's missing both of his front teeth. Yep. Oh, poor dude. Uh, if this is the way that the skeleton infantry are going to go, I'm all for it. 
in the future, I mean, Absolutely, for future looks. Absolutely, yeah. And there will also be the benefit of probably them being easy build kits, and thus you will never, ever have to worry about sticking crappy skeletons together again. Yeah. Which is Those a dumb, godsend. God damn skeleton arms. Yeah, skeleton arms, skeleton legs, and they are just tiny. They're on the tiniest mm-hmm. bases. I'm assuming that these are going to be not the smaller spaces, uh, and just like the regular sized smaller base. Not like the uber small base, which was like, what, 10? 10, 10 millimeters or something like that? Or was it 15? Uh, I'm looking at them now. Um, I think you might be right. Yeah, I think they've upped the size of the bases for these. Mm-hmm. Just because they've got the wide, wider leg poses and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And that's good because I, I like the super duper small bases, I think maybe should be thrown away. They were too small. Yeah, I mean, they, they work for. Um... The goblins, the uh, the grots, but that's sure. really about it. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think skeletons, you know, uh, skeletons aren't big, but I don't think they should be on the same size scale as a goblin. Yeah, unless yeah. they are goblin skeletons, then fair enough. <laughs> that's okay then. <laughs> Fine. Uh, there, should, there should be more goblin skeletons. Damn it. Ah, I'd like to see some goblin skeletons. That could be fun. Mm-hmm. I think with this, we we can probably go with. We just need more types of skeletons. Yeah, yeah, just uh, we need at least uh, a box of skeletons for every race of the mortal realms. I'd be all right with that. I mean, I mm-hmm. think I think you could leave out um, the elves because elves skeletons would probably look similar enough to human skeletons. Yeah, so yeah. that's fine. Whatever. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, different different varieties of skeletons. Uh, and then we have the zombos, uh, dead walkers. This zombos. is where we start getting interesting. <laughs> yes, and we have even more references to Dark Souls. I would say we kind of uh, saw these in the original preview with uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the zombies wearing uh, the the their crypts on their back or the tombstones yeah. on the back. Um, some of them are, have headdresses. Uh, they they actually remind me of like a New Orleans theme, like the voodoo zombies that you'd get from the yeah. New Orleans kind of theme. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. And they got can- some of them have candles, of course. That's the way. <laughs> I, I like I these a lot, the and I like the that... way that they're being painted because you've got some with uh, brownish tones to them, some that have uh, like whitish purple tones, and then we have a green zombie as well, which is nice. Mm-hmm. I like them. I like them quite a lot. The thing that absolutely gets me with them is the fact that the 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 coffin lid has been nailed through them. Mm, yeah, that's what it is, isn't so it? That, yeah, that's where you got that stake that comes through them. It's to stop them from getting up again. Hasn't worked. Well, no, surely that. it's because maybe they were thought to have been vampires. Maybe, maybe. But the the idea that the coffin lid has a stake built into it is so good. Mm, yeah. No, my assumption uh, was the whole vampire thing because they've got a stake through the heart, so they they didn't come back as a vampire. So. So that's they come okay. back as zombies instead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. I'd argue that's worse. I'd prefer to come back as a vampire, I think. Yeah, at least you've had your own agency if you came back as a vampire. That's true. You'd be cool too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we see them again, but in different colours. Yeah. <laughs> Still good though. Still very good. But that's mm-hmm. all of the uh, all of the, the basic horde. kind of fodder, I guess you could call them. Mm-hmm. And they're all good. I don't think there's a, a crappy one out of them. Uh, maybe j- go for the rats and the bats, but I'm not going to say they're crap. I'm just going to say they're boring compared to everything else. Well, they're, they're low level, aren't they? Exactly, you, yeah. Uh, you have to go up against to start with in order to start getting your levels up. Yeah, they, they're the chaff. For mm-hmm. for the enemy player, they're the, the chaff that you kind of throw at them, so you, you waste uh, maybe one or two hit points, or you absorb some damage so the, the slower units can get in. Like the zombies. And so I also remember in the original Warhammer Quest, yeah, you start fighting rats and bats, and it's like, oh, this is easy enough. And then you start getting 50 of them turning up into a single room, and you're like, well, this is a problem. I don't think there'll be that many, right? No, no not in this one, I don't think. Which is unfortunate, just from the look of the size <laughs> of the box. But still, not the point. No, no. So should we get into the uh, the enemy characters? Yeah, take this it away. Is, uh, this is some absolutely incredible stuff. We already knew we'll about start... two of them. Did we talk about the skeleton white dude or not? Because we definitely talked about no. the... Uh, uh, God, which one was it? Oh, none Grosslav, of these ones. the Gravekeeper. Yeah, the, no, we'll there he is. Grosslav. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We talked about him before, but not the rest. We'll start off with the Vicross Bloodborne. Which one's that? half wolf, half vampire, feral 
bouncy things. Oh, I just thought it was a Vargeist, to be fair, or a new interpretation of what Vargeists would be. Not him. Not him. Oh. There's, um, there's three little guys. Oh, those they ones. They're almost ghouls. Paws. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's what they are. Ah, okay. I like them a lot. I think they're fantastic. They're a wonderful design. I mean, the the fact that they're, they're vampire at the head, and as it goes down, it becomes more feral, mm. more bestial. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's really up my alley as a design, uh, especially the one with the mohawk, because once again, this is starting to feel like something out of late 80s, early 90s Warhammer. Yeah, again, I could easily see these guys going into uh, a Legacy of Kane game, as we mentioned before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Easy. There's so many elements going on here that... Uh, that just sings my tune. Mm, you definitely. Know? I can see that. Yeah. It's like somebody said that AOS wasn't grim dark enough, and <laughs> they just went, ah, here you go. Challenge accepted, my friend. Uh, but more exciting than them, uh, we already talked about Gorslav the Gravekeeper. He's he's absolutely wonderful. So we're going to watch Captain Halgrim. Which one's that? Is that the skeleton? That is the, yeah, that's the skeleton who is the head of the city watch. I like him a lot. He is wonderful. You put him next to the uh, the white that we we were talking mm. about earlier. Yeah, th- this yep. is what I want from Undead uh, Heroes. Yeah, absolutely. And this is what I was saying about having to buy two copies of this because A, I want the game, mm-hmm. and B, I need him in my skeleton army. Oh, definitely. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is such a wonderful sculptor, and he'd be great as a uh, some kind of I don't know, commanding force or something. Yeah, he's... He's just wonderful. He's oh, such a yeah. great side. So many lovely textures all going through him. And it wouldn't be that difficult to actually do him up in uh, a bit of a night haunt feel as well. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I think that'd be easy enough. Well, easy mm-hmm. enough. Yeah, yeah. I love the armour. God, I am, This is one of the things I'm taking away from this, uh, this game is all of the armour that people are wearing is just so nice. Mm, definitely. It all tells its own story. And that's... <clears throat> Ah, chef's kiss. Um, the thing I really like about Halgrim is that he tried to uh, tell, uh, he tried to stop the vampires taking over and was killed for his betrayal. And then the Necrons has brought him back to life. So it's like, there you go. Well, he's what still he's still helping the city, just not in the way he intended. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's, I want to know what the purge was. The, uh, the, it talks it was a lot a really about the bad purge of the series. City. That's what it was. <laughs> we don't talk about it, though. I mean, the, the fact that there's a novel coming with this as well really excites me. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, do, actually, do we know if we're getting that novel on audiobook or not? We should do. I mean, Is that a that yes that it's Fortress. happening, or is this just a, a yes, I hope it is? Using past experience, I would say yes, it is. Okay. That would be my guesstimation. Right, but we're, no confirmation at the moment. No confirmation, no. Okay, that's fine. But it's a seal word. I'm not bitter. <laughs> not at all. It's a seal word. The, the chances are it will be audio booked. I would hope so. Re- read by Toby Longworth. Hey, that's that'd be even CL, better. That's what happens to CL Warner books. <laughs> is, it, is that true? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Huh. yeah. I'd never know. that. CL Warner. CL Warner is actually probably one of the most respected Black Library uh, authors. He doesn't turn around very often. But when he turns up, people pay attention. Hmm. Yeah, he's not like uh, Dembski Bowden, who's like um, an event writer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When he writes, when something comes out with uh, Dembski Bowden's name on it, you pay attention. Oh, yeah. Warner just kind of just works it away in the background, and then something will come out, and it will be solid. Hmm. I really like Warner. I think he's very, very good. Very, very good at what he does. Uh, moving on, then. Let's get real nasty. Because we have what is the updated version of the Vargeist. Do we actually have any confirmation on what this thing is meant to be? They did give him a name um, on the preview, but it's not on the uh, Cursed City website. Right, okay. Um, which is a bit of an annoyance. He's not there in the uh, Overlords of Ulfenkarn uh, collection. But from what they were saying is, this is what happens when one of the uh, the vampires just goes bestial, just goes completely feral. They become this. Yeah, so it's a hundred percent of our guys then. Yeah. Hundred yeah, so percent. That's what I'm yeah, so that's what I am saying. This is the updated version. This is what they're gonna start looking like. Yeah. That's um, great because it looks um, amazing. 
It looks incredible. I like the wolf element that's appeared in it. Mm, definitely, definitely. There's there's bat in there, there's wolf in there. It is just beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean... It's all right, isn't I'm it? I'm actually in, <laughs> I'm intimidated by this box, in all honesty. Okay, why are you intimidated? Just the sheer size and scale of what you've got to paint. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's... Um, but you're looking at this guy and it's like, that's going to be a really interesting paint job. You're going to have to do so much work with it to get it to look, you know, to really live up to its potential. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I just fucking look at him. I can imagine that you were very happy to see him. Yeah, I, I thought he's neat. Like, the, the Vargeist are never my favourite thing from the, excuse me, the Undead faction, but they are. it's nice mm-hmm. to see... It being done right, because uh, the last time I looked at a Vargeist uh, is basically the Flesh Eater Courts, isn't it? Yeah. Because that's yeah. what they're currently in, and they're they're an okay kit, but they uh, they have too many obvious uh, similar aesthetics to the, the Crypt Horrors, for good reasons, because it's obviously the same kit. So it's nice to see this is a lot more unique visually to that. D- uh, this must mean that if this isn't a Vargeist or a Vargeist equivalent... What, uh, are we are we getting something changed to the flesh eaters? Are we probably we're probably not going to talk about the flesh eaters for a while. I assume. No, I don't think so. Bless them. Um, I wonder if the flesh eaters are just going to be left as is, uh, without anything really happening to them. You might be right, unfortunately, which is a bit of a bummer because they they kind of they kind of need something done for them. Yeah, they do. But I mean, they're they're, they're a starter army, aren't they? They're yeah, um, pretty much one of the things to get AOS running. Yeah, I can. I wonder if they'll get, like, um, absorbed into something and you get, like, a, a mini battle tome at some point. I wouldn't be shocked to see them absorbed into maybe Soul Blight and maybe you, you say they're not crypt ghouls or degenerated vampires or the vampires are able to yeah, control yeah. them a little bit better because, I mean, that's what the uh, the Arch Regents were. They were kind of messed up vampires. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. So that could work easily enough, I would say, mm. yeah. Which would be a shame because I really like the... The idea of the flesh eater curse, but I think it's one you could of those still things... keep it though, couldn't you? You could, but it, they lose a lot of the flavor. You think if so? If they be get, get absorbed into something else, uh, maybe. Um, but then uh, that's the problem. I love the idea, but I don't think it's been executed brilliantly. Mm. It works brilliantly in in novels and short stories and whatnot, but when you're on the battlefield with them or you're collecting the army. There is a huge disconnect between what you actually have and what the lore is. Yeah, I mean that's um, the issue with them just being as old as they are, right? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You'd need a full army refresh in order to, to solve that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, that's why I just like converted the shit out of all the mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So shall we move on to the Chamberlain, mm. or as I like to call him, Old Bob? Mm. Mm. Gelfling. <laughs> uh, I got my bat, my crow, my stuff, and my cat. He's he's, I, he's 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 an animal lover. Why is he painted as a villain? Uh, I think it's because all the animals around him are dead, and he's brought them back to life. That that's because he loves them. <laughs> he loves his pets so much he doesn't want to be apart from that. I think it's a nice story about a man who loves his animals so much he's willing to do evil things to retain them. And he's sure. vilified for it. <laughs> Who's the real monster, Adam? Hmm? Uh, that would be uh, Mikey. Mikey's the real monster. That's true. No one on the show really knows Mikey, though, so that's even better. No, no, no. Well, I think that's why uh, this joke continuously works. <laughs> no one knows who Mikey is. No one can know true but, horror. But we, we paint him as being, like, this one of history's greatest monsters. I mean, we're not painting him, is it? His actions are painting him, is it? Well, that's true, yeah. He himself is painting himself in a self-portrait as one of history's greatest monsters. If only he'd learn. He does learn. He just learns evil. <laughs> Pure that's the problem. Hilarious. So, uh, speaking of Mikey, this representation of him in miniature form. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, does this guy not just say, hello, I've just walked in for more time to you? Uh, yeah, oh, I mean, that's... Uh, that's a, this entire set, I would say. Uh, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah. He seems to have some kind of uh, gallows on his back or something like that. Like it was part of uh, like his head was put through and he was locked in to one of these uh, mm. things. What were they called? Where they were in the middle of the street? Stocks. Stocks. Yeah, yeah. he's got a yeah. stock on him, and I guess it was never <laughs> taken off. 
Maybe. Maybe it's... I, I feel sorry for the uh, the crow, though, because it looks like he's got that candle far too close to him. Yeah, the crow it's does look like... like it's screaming. It's like, I'm on fire! Why? <laughs> Why? I'm dead, but I still feel. <laughs> Why would you not remove the ability to feel from me? <laughs> you, you monster. But yeah, I'm I'm all in for the Chamberlain. I think he's absolutely wonderful. He's not my favourite, um, but again, if we're no. going for a necromantic type characters, he looks a lot cooler than, again, what we're used to. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think this is really starting to pick up what the necromancers should look like. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they should look old, but not shit. And this was the problem yeah. with all War Warhammer. All of the necromancers in that game looked shit, in my opinion. Did they? I thought they did. They looked like old, crappy old men who were boring. Boring, crappy old people. Didn't like them. <laughs> Eat it. Should we, should we move on to the last one? Yeah! So, when they said the wolf, what you know, been the the end of uh, game boss, what did you imagine? I I imagined like some maybe fallen knight. Um, I imagined some kind of maybe um, sort of very... Uh, bestial type uh, wolf person, like wolf vampire. Mm-hmm. And did you have any ideas going in what uh, what you thought Raka the wolf would be? Well, I didn't Ra- think it would Radugan. be a giant Russian vampire. You didn't think it would be a giant Russian ogre vampire? No. No, I, I didn't assume that. I, I should have done, because it, it was so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking giant Russian ogre vampire. Yeah, come out looking well too. What the hell? Who the sweet Jesus thought this one up? Like, like visually, he's not my favorite, but I think from a no. concept standpoint, it's very interesting. And it's again, it kind of goes against what we've seen for uh, even the new vampires that they've made for the uh, the Underworld set, who are very yeah, yeah. gothic and stuff. This is a very stylized vampire and i think that's really good because it gives like mm-hmm. it, it adds more to the vampire visual aesthetic and lore i suppose it's this guy came from a yeah. different culture than the other vampires we've seen made so far and he just happens to be a vampire now because mm-hmm. this is probably how he dressed in life as well no doubt oh yeah like an evil cossack dancer yeah exactly <laughs> the mamushka <laughs> mamushka mamushka will take your blood out <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, it's so insane. Mm. It works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. The fact, the fact that he's just wearing a pair of wolves, it's so ridiculous. He, he's not, he's not Dracula from the end of Castlevania. He's not that no. kind of elegant. No, he's not elegant at all. He's a no. beast. Yeah, he's a, he's a full on bruiser kind of vampire, mm. which is good for like, um, for this kind of game, I don't think you want yeah. like a mastermind-looking vampire at the end of this. No, no. It wouldn't. No, it wouldn't you, quite you fit, would it? No. It's. Uh, I love the fact he's got this like giant fur cloak made of two wolves. He's got that big hat, but he's got no shirt. No, well, no. He's got to show off his pecs. Mm-hmm. Also, because the cold like... didn't bother him, so that's that's <laughs> just how it is. The cold doesn't no. bother me anymore. No, I didn't mean that. Stop it. <laughs> Villain. <laughs> Villain. I like the fact that there's um, scars on his chest with the wolves, and then one of the wolves has just, like, big scars along the head. I think someone should uh, paint a little tear on that wolf's head so it looks like it's <laughs> always sad. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, I didn't mean to cut you. The Chamberlain brought the wolf back to life, but it's just removed all of his innards. Yeah, is it, yeah, it's just a skin, the skin of the wolf, so it's still alive. Like, oh. <laughs> that sounds like something cruel that a necromancer would do. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, right, this is your uh, your punishment. These are actually his dogs. <laughs> oh, no. Sp- Spot and Fido. <laughs> this is what happens when you pee on the master's uh, carpet. Hang on. Or mess up his bed. What are we hanging Weird on? Thought. Okay, what's up? What if it's not two wolves, but it's just a giant two-headed wolf? Oh, that could be interesting. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah. It could very I well be a two-headed wolf, because that'd be neat as well. Mm. There is definitely not enough space there for eight legs. No. To be hanging out. So, but it could... Uh, ju- yeah, you're, you're quite right. But then again, it could be like the wolf's head has been cut off and then used as a shoulder pad, and then he also has a big giant cloak. Oh, you could be right. It could be a two-headed wolf. Yeah, actually, you, you might be right there looking at the way that the, the tail comes out from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would actually make more sense. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. 
Not entirely uh, sure. I want to see it from the back. It were. Does the... <laughs> Uh, no, the there isn't a spinning version on the uh, the Cursed City website. Disgusting. Gah, you bastards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we get to see what's actually in the box. You get the eight heroes, the rulebook and quest book, the War Scrolls book. There we go. Ten objective markers, which look wonderfully grim. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. Hostiles, counters and tokens. Tw- 28 dice. Is that enough? Uh, oh, actually looking. Boards, gateways and lich tiles. Lich there tiles. is stuff in that picture which isn't in the top one, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, because oh. on the top picture you've got all the blue ones. Mm-hmm. And then you've got one, you've got three light ones. Yeah, right. Um, but if we look down here, we've got a medium as well. Ooh. They're not as light. Okay. So. I mean, that could be just stuff that's on the other side, but I don't see... Nope. You see the, in the what's in the box picture? Right. There is a tile which is like a stair shape. Uh, yes. With a checkered pattern. Yes. That stair shape is not in that top picture. Okay, so the, the, the theoretically will be more pieces then, at the very least. Unless it's that picture that's right at the back that looks like an L. Oh, no. I, I, I can't tell. I can't tell. Nobody knows. Uh, you're, you also get a secret envelope, much like Blackstone <laughs> Fortress, and all the cards you need to play. And then we get the book from C.L. Warner. So yeah, that's uh, that's everything. What are your thoughts right now on Cursed City, Andy? Uh, it's a pretty good set. I don't know if I'd buy it myself, just on the basis mm-hmm. that obviously I'd have no one to play it with, and then I'd have eight heroes who I don't care about. Um, not that they're bad, but, you know, I don't like good people. I like I like... My undead. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is an impressive looking set. I still, like I said earlier, I still think the board is the most disappointing thing about it. But it's one of those really super annoying things as ever as here's a box set. How many years until we see at least some of the stuff outside of the box? Because it's not going to be will. months. It's going to be at best, at best, at best years. I don't ever. think you will. You're probably I right. This, I think this stuff has been made for this game and. If any of the design concepts make it into anything else, there'll be new sculpts. They won't be re-releases of these ones. I, I don't know. I could see the skeletons uh, maybe being reused. But as uh, in terms of actual maybe. characters, yes, you, you're right. Ma- the zombies mm-hmm. maybe get reused. But if, if they didn't, yeah. again, I wouldn't be super overly surprised either. No, no. I don't, know. I, I don't see it happening. Um, stuff from Silver Tower never got released outside. There's, oh, uh, really? Stuff from Hammerhall that never got released outside of the, uh, oh, the game. Interesting. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, Blackstone Fortress, I don't think it's had anything released outside of Blackstone. Oh, okay. No, I don't think it has. Um, so, yeah, I, I think this stuff will just be out for the game and that'll be it. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> It's also a way for me to save money if I don't go and buy one as well. Yeah, yeah. Because it'll be um, expensive. I'm... For good reason, of course, but it will be expensive. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What are, what are we uh, thinking? Oh, 120? Something like that, maybe? 150. 150, 150. okay. Yeah, that would be my guess. Because there is a lot in there. I might be wrong. You heard uh, it here first, like to... for folks. It's being confirmed. 150 pounds. If Adam's wrong, he'll give you the money to, to make up for that. <laughs> no, I fucking won't. Yeah, he will. So. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to say 150 because I want it to be less. And if it's less than that, and if I kind of oh, make I myself see. think it's going to be that much, then it'll seem like a, a deal. I when, see. Uh, it, you're tricking out. yourself. I am, yeah. yeah. You sneaky boy. That's what I'm doing. I'm a, I'm a naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to uh, get some questions answered from the Discord, but we're kind of out of time at the moment. so uh, We could maybe do one. Gonna... We've got, uh, we've got we can't... about 10 minutes. Okay, dopes. Uh, do, 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 do. The only question that I've got in here is that's about the actual um, uh, preview is from Logan Blaze. Oh. And he uh, he just says, My main concern is the criminal lack of Tau. Do you think the Tau are going to get anything anytime soon? A calm down, communist. <laughs> just because it's our game doesn't mean that you can take up a position in it. <laughs> Come on. Terrible. <laughs> no fish people allowed. Go away. 
they're, they're fish cow people. The fish. Oh, oh, that's true. They are cow people. Yeah. They're p- part bovine, part piscine. All and, anime. Uh, all, all weeaboo. All weeaboo, yeah, totally. I do think the Tau got better, you know. The the Tau got a lot better than that original release. Um, especially when they started getting a bit more, like, uh, stuff in the background that kind of made them seem less um, altruistic than they actually are. Hmm. The you, Tau are bastards. You know, you know what my problem is with, with the Tau? Mm. Fire Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Always and forever, Fire Warrior. Yeah, whenever you look at the tower, you just remember your time with Fire Warrior and start to cry. Yeah, I remember the the, the life I had and how it ate away at that. Yeah. And I got that nothing was... from it apart from irritation. And a hatred of the tower. And a hatred of the tower, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I also dislike the tower because of Fire Warrior. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, the tower, they're all right. They're, um... Yeah, sure. Yeah, there's stuff in there I like. There's stuff in there I don't like. I've never really been a fan of the... Uh, the infantry part of it, but I like no. the vehicles. I like they're, the drones. I they're once cool. again a force that has not really been touched and kind of needs a rework at this point to to kind of make them cool or cooler. Yeah, yeah. I think they could just do with a bit of a, a shake up, you know. Yeah. Um, especially in the law, yeah. It'd be you've got um, is it Fast Rider? Are we uh, talking about a character? Because I've no idea. Yeah, the the one that um, broke away from the tower and went off to do his own thing. Um, because he he found something out, and the he got excommunicated or exiled hmm. from the uh, the major Tau Empire. Um, I can't remember his. I think it's Fast Rider, Fast Sun, something like that. Um, he uh, he's an interesting idea, and it would be interesting to do something with this like other Tau population that's kind of over there. All right, but I think that the Tau as they are, they they kind of just like sit there and do stuff and it's weird <laughs> that they kind of just keep appearing when they have no warp technology yeah has that ever really been explained or is it just oh they're fast yeah not not to my knowledge okay um, i mean do you get much in the way of gene stealer cults with the tower you know the, mm. they always feel that they're kind of just there yeah here is 40k and also the tower i can see that yeah it's yeah, slightly strange it is, which is, as I say, really irritating because there is a lot of stuff you can do with them. There's a, a wonderful Cyphus Cain story about um, a planet that's half Imperium, half Tau, and there's humans living on both sides. Shall I make a guess as to why we don't have much of the the Tau? Yeah. Okay, my guess, let me let me, let mm. me push the limb out here, is because we've been overly focused on Chaos and Space Marines for one or two years. Maybe one year. Yeah. Maybe a little bit too much for one year. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's, uh, there's maybe just... maybe not like fifty years of just space marines and chaos space marines. Maybe not. That. And I, I would even say that the chaos space marines have a tendency of getting uh, overlooked as well. In some, well, in in some part, at least model wise, yes. Not in terms of yes. fiction. I would one hundred percent disagree. No, no, no. Fiction wise. Oh no, no, you're absolutely right. Fiction, there is always chaos space marines. Yes. Model wise, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> you know what we got to get out first? More Space Marines. Yeah, more Primaris. <laughs> At this point in time, the Imperium should just be winning, shouldn't it? You would have the thought The sheer so. amount of troops that they've got, you know. They keep touting uh, how many they've got. Well, well no, they it, don't tout it. We just get enough new models for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's well, one of those ones where the Imperium is always on the back foot. Are they but we, have, we literally have ten men for every man. Yeah, exactly. It feels like it. Mm-hmm. Well, I get it. I understand. As I always say, I understand. They're the 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 the, the brand pusher, but man, it gets annoying. Yeah. It it does, especially when you look at something like Curse City, and you're just like, you could be doing so much other stuff. <laughs> look what happens when it's not power armor. Mm, I know, right? <laughs> look what happens when it's not just guy in helmet with power armor and bolter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's ridiculous. No one likes it was fantasy the same though. With the, uh, well, it's the same when the Gene Sealer cults came out. It's like, look at what you can do! Yeah, that's true. They did a lot with them. Yeah, in a very short space of time. Yeah, it's absolutely. And then uh, yeah, the Adeptus Mechanicus, whenever they get something, it's like, that's an amazing piece of work. Mm, yeah. And also, here are some Space Marines. Yeah, it always feels like uh, there has to be some kind of Space Marine release alongside something else. Yeah. So it's like, oh, no, 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 we're still doing Space Marine stuff. Don't worry, Every everyone yeah, who's been yeah. with... Uh, GW for the longest time is oh we're, 
we don't worry. We know more Space Marine stuff coming. It's always coming. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I think with that, then we're going to uh, we're going to start closing things up. Andy, me. Where can people find you if they so wish to find you? You can find me on Twitter as cctfw, YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW. You can find my podcast, which is the Moonbase Two podcast, on the Moonbase Two forums, uh, on Twitter, iTunes, Facebook, Libsyn, and YouTube as Moonbase Two Transformers podcast, where we talk about obviously Transformers uh, and other stuff at the moment, since there is no Transformers news because uh, there's been no toy fairs because of COVID. So yeah, yeah. that's really slowing down the news process. But hey, we're, we're still having a good time talking and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> and you can also find me on Twitch playing video games. Uh, and I'm just CCTFW on there as well. Excellent stuff. Yay. That's, uh, that's a good question, actually. I mean, is there going to be a point where there's going to be this like barrage of news kind of hit you all at once and you have to do like an eight-hour show? Oh, Christ, I hope not. I don't think there'll be a barrage of news. I think no, it's no. some... Po- like, last year there was a random Hasbro stream where they showed off some stuff, but I don't oh, know yeah, if they're going to do that because I streamed that and that was quite fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and it feels like they should probably just do one of those since the, the toy fairs aren't around. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, probably do with I, I'd uh, hope so. one every two months or so. That would probably be a decent idea. Oh, almost like some other company does that. Yeah, almost like some other company that's worked <laughs> out how to have a really good uh, um, relationship with its community. It is weird that after all these years, GW is the one way you look to and you go, oh, wow, this is maybe how you do customer relations. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> Bizarre, isn't it? It is. I- I say it multiple times. What is this company now? I don't understand. Clearly, you got someone in high in in management who went, you know, we could actually try, and someone went, oh, yeah, all right well, then. That sounds novel. Yeah, it's the CEO. Yeah, <laughs> who would have thought? You know, <laughs> <laughs> who who would have thought having a CEO that uh, understood how the internet and how gamers work? You know, I think it's one of the only times I've heard of a CEO coming in and doing something where everyone's like, wow, th- I can see why people respect the CEO rather than like someone like uh, Bobby Kotick from um, yeah, from yeah. video games who are like, wow, you're just an asshole. Oh, God, yeah. You're just how, ruining how everything system- that's good. <laughs> this guy's like... systematically yeah. shit on a, uh, a fan base. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Well, the, I've, I don't know who the, the CEO is of GW, but he's came in clearly and he's fixed everything that was... Uh, uh, fixed a lot of things. I won't say everything. I won't be that hyperbolic, no, no. but he's fixed no. mo- a lot of the major issues that a lot of people had for the longest time made it profitable that's oh, a nice yeah. change i think we've just lost yep we have lost sound uh i think i lost that so what i'm going to do is then i'm going to just start closing up the show um so we can be found on twitter at the fluff and hammer we can be found at Instagram at the Fluff and Hammer. We can be found um, on Facebook. There's a page and a group, and you can find us wherever your heart desire. And with that, I'm going to say good night. George would have said good night, but he's gone. Andy has vanished off the face of the earth. That's just me now. It's like the end of War of the Worlds. Just me, as all of my communications end. Do do do. Bye-bye now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bust away from it!
Say hey.